Can you see that screen, Daz? I can, yes. We can see your big building on the screen. Perfect, perfect. All right, cool. And just, um, I just missed what I know. I knew you were chatting away before, Daz. But what, what was the kind of general background? Have we got like a lot of S and Cs, PTs, students, various different things like that in, involved? Yeah, yeah. Really, really good mix. Really good, varied mix. We've got, um, you know, people right across the board, either kind of in a totally different. Um, environment at all, totally different career, people PT and s and in, interning, uh, awesome. studying, yeah, a bit of everything. Wicked, wicked. And I've, I've already seen a few familiar faces are tuned in. I've uh, had a little chat with chat with Ross, one of our ex-students and, and great s and coach in rugby union in the Air Force and in general. Um, Ross is on the line listening in, so thanks for tuning in, Ross. Uh, I've had a chat with Tom, who's just signed up for our mentorship. Uh, it's cool to get Tom on the line. And we've also got Ben Gray. I know I've chatted to Ben this week as well. And so, and I'm sure there's probably loads more of you that I've uh, maybe not mentioned, but um, I know pretty well from either coaching or courses or whatever it is. So thanks to everyone for tuning in. And I'm going to get straight into this now because last time we, we did we delivered this, we were getting people tuning in for till, till kind of 8.15, 8.20 and we've got a lot of people on the line tonight but um, it's going to it's it's gonna kind of, I've got a lot to share with you as well so I don't want to keep you guys waiting. So essentially you've got a big building in front of you and for me this is it, this is what it's all about. Could be presentation over right here but this is actually a cool building because I um, went to Rome on uh, many many years ago with my better half and we we kind of wandering through the streets and we just sort of confronted with this amazing building and uh, it's been around for thousands of years it's called the Pantheon and you can see the size of it when you look at the people at the base of it which which puts it into perspective but um, it really does represent kind of the exactly what we're trying to build with our athletes in that we want that very, very solid foundation and we can then think about the ornate nature at the top of it when we've got that foundation and, and that base secured. And I know that I'm going to go into a lot more tonight, but if you take anything away from it, it's, it's from today's presentation right now on slide number one, it would be build those foundations and, and, and get into the get into the basics there and, and I'm going to explain and get into quite a lot of that. And first things first, a big thumbs up to, to everyone attending. It's it's really cool, you know, it's eight PM at night on a Thursday evening, a school night. You could be doing many, many other things. You could be cabbaged out on the sofa doing nothing and instead you choose to, to listen to me and, and prior to that to Darren rambling on so that's pretty cool it, it's it's nice to it's nice to get you on the line and, and I really always enjoy sharing things with you and I'm sure that kind of I'm sure you can take some stuff away from it tonight and I know I did catch Darren talking about are we going to give the slides out well if you can see how many words are on these slides in general you kind of get a gist of where I'm at, at the moment with with presentations and things and I think like a picture paints a thousand words, but you still need some words to, to paint with. Um, so I'm definitely really happy for Darren to stick up the recording and everybody can check that out after and you can watch it again. Um, and, and hopefully you'll have your notepad around you tonight so you can make notes and take some, some ideas away from this session. A little bit about me, if you're not aware of my background. Um, really out and out strength and conditioning coach by trade and been coaching for well really I've been coaching for about 15 years and as a professional strength and conditioning coach for about 10 and I was a, a martial artist by trade I did a lot of judo jiu-jitsu boxing wrestling and later mixed martial arts and Brazilian jiu-jitsu and at one point that was really going to be my passion that was going to be where I was going to go and build a career in in martial arts and then I, I read a, a book, I think, by 
an old periodization book or something like that, and it just really actually sparked a massive interest in strength and conditioning, and I, I took it a lot further. I went to study it for years and years and years, traveled all over the world, went over to America, worked with people like Mike Boyle in the States, and, and visited all the performance centers as well as the Aussies and, and, and those guys. And, and then I, I've been fortunate as a coach to work with many, many organizations, of which in front of you now is just literally a fraction of that. Um, early days with the EIS up in the northeast with GB rowing and the swimming guys and, and freelance uh, multi-sports up there. I then went to Durham Uni and again ran the cricket program, had a lot of county cricketers and, and different athletes there. I went to British Tennis from there and I, I worked as the lead S&C coach managing all the programs of the young talented tennis players around the country. and fantastic opportunity, it gave me a bit more of a leadership role and management role of, of other coaches and that really got me into the educating side and the importance of that and then I went to Leeds Met and and, for, and now actually Leeds Beckett University and worked there in the meantime I was always consulting with different sports teams and rugby clubs and you know always always throughout that I've, I've helped the, the combat guys at the AVT um, MMA gym and, and I've been really fortunate enough to have a some, some couple of UFC fighters that I've managed to train there as, as well as countless other people and on top of that I, I've been a, a passionate educator and, and, and sharing methods with, with coaches for many years and I love doing that and it's not about there's no real agenda there it's just about everybody's getting better everybody's improving and that that education sort of like roots that I went down morphed into the mentorship program that we now run, which is so, uh, so um, well thought of and, and is growing so rapidly, which is very, very flattering. But uh, but it's really cool, you know, it's just good to, to coach and be involved and, you know, it's, it's great. So, I, I, again, appreciate everybody's time this evening on, on the webinar and, and, and flattered that you, you, you're, you're around to join me tonight. So, three things on the agenda this evening. And at any point, if you've got any questions, please do type them in. I will be more than happy to, to, to answer them. Some of them maybe I might kind of leave them till the end, and uh, others I'll tackle them head on. So please do kind of get in the mix with that. So three things on the agenda tonight. Here they are. In fact, there's a bonus one. There's four things on the agenda tonight. I'm going to share with you tonight what the key to coaching success is. How about that? You didn't expect that, did you? Unless you read the emails, of course. <laughs> um, so I'm going to share with you my beliefs and, and my thoughts on really what the critical things are to coaching success. And then we're going to look at, you see that program in the back there on the right? That is just a program. It doesn't really matter what program it is, but we're going to try and answer this question. Where did this program come from? You see a lot of blogs and internet articles on just kind of, is this session good? Should I follow this program? Well, really, to, to answer that question, you've got to actually look at what the program brings to the table, and there's some key questions around that that we're going to tackle tonight when we look at how to build your performance program. And you'll definitely take that some really good stuff away on, on how to build your performance program. And before we get to that, I'm going to share with you some lessons from the best of the best, if you like. Some mentors of mine, some people that are doing great things internationally in coaching, and really just things that do have to be considered and really do inform the program that you write and that you put together, and the way that we think, more importantly, as coaches, the way that we think. So hopefully be able to, to influence the way you think when you're thinking about coaching, and that's one of the things that we found on the mentorship that people have mentioned that you know, they, they've been on the course and they sort of changed the way they're approaching their, and thinking about their coaching, in a sense. And then finally, a little present. I'm going to give some really cool stuff away along and during this webinar, but some really nice free giveaways I'm going to give people for, for getting involved and interacting in the webinar tonight. And then right at the end of the webinar, at the very end, I'm going to give away some serious prizes as well. Um, some serious stuff that's worth hundreds of pounds. Uh, so please do stay on the line to check all of those things out. I'm looking forward to sharing that with you. And 
it's going to be cool. It's going to be good. Becky has said your screen is still blank. Uh, it shouldn't be blank, Becky. You should have. You should be able to see the screen right now. Um, maybe it's a window behind it or something like that. I'm presuming everybody else is good. Um, but if if you if you're not, please do shout up and we'll see what we can do. Uh, do you want to message Becky, Darren, maybe in the background there? Okay, so three things on the agenda, plus some presents. I'm going to cover a little bit about our mentorship program as well. And um, at the end of the talk, you can check out the, the mentorship, strength and conditioning mentorship.com forward slash list. We've got a special, special kind of opportunity set up for anybody on this webinar. It's only that address, though. Anybody on this webinar can get some really cool stuff at the end of it. And wow, what a cool thing that is. So we're going to go into that as well. We believe that it is the best development opportunity for coaching and PTs in the UK. And I'm not going to dwell on that for now, but I want to be able to prove that to you by the end of this session. I want to prove that to you. Um, so again, hang tight. And, um, and, we'll, and we'll reveal that. We've got some people that have also said screen is blank, but then they found it. Uh, Andrew, hopefully you've got it by now. Just click on the golden clover or the blue clover that represents go to at the bottom of the screen, and hopefully it should bring it up. I'm hopeful that uh, everybody's sorted. Daz, can you see my screen all right? I'm, I'm just getting a few people saying the screen is black. I can see the screen fine, yeah. It, is, okay. it might be worth if you're having any issues for anybody. I know it sounds a bit kind of like the, the it crowd, but uh, try sort of coming out and getting back straight back in again. If you do it really quick, then you should still be able to keep your, your spot. Um, or it might be loitering around in the background, as has been mentioned. But it is working, guys. All right. Hopefully it'll be okay, guys. So we're going to prove that to you tonight. Um, but before that, I really want to get into the nitty gritty of what is the key to coaching success. And I'm going to share what I believe it is. Uh, but bef but what I want to do is get you guys into the mix tonight. I'm going to give away a free copy of this video of mine, which is the best of the best. It's like an expanded version on what well, a part of this presentation is a keynote presentation that I gave at the National Students Conference for Strength and Conditioning a year or two ago, and it's a it's a decent talk. It's a good one-hour talk. It's it's worth 50 or 60 quid on on our website. I think we sell it for. So that's cool. I'm going to give that away. All I want you to do is type in what you think the key to coaching success is. The first person to match my definition of coaching success is going to get a free copy of the best of the best. Type away. Have a go. See, let's let's see what we can uh, what we can get out of this. And just while you type away, folks, I've just had a message from Stephen saying his screen was blank. It uh, was black, so he left the webinar, and rejoined, and it's now fine. So that might be the might be the key there. Uh, Mark Laws, how you doing, mate? It's uh, all it, it's it's uh, it's results. Absolutely, can't argue with that. I'm not going to give it away yet, though. Um, understanding clients' goals. We've had a couple of people saying saying that. Confidence, persistence, continuous improvement. I'm loving it. I'm loving all of these things and absolutely everything. I'm going to keep going and it will become clear. All right, keep typing away because I still haven't seen the, the absolute answer. J Josh, the best way to achieve what your client wants to achieve, absolutely. All right, I'm going to keep going. And I'm going to keep going, and you can keep typing in, by the way. You can have more than one go on this one. You're not out. Um, I'm going to keep going by asking you a question. I'm going, to, I'm going to ask you this question. What connects the following professions? So this profession is our profession, strength and conditioning, fitness, personal training. And that's the first one. Here's the second one. This is the, the boardroom, the business environment. All right, that's the second one. Here's the third one. This little fella here is a craftsman. Okay, he's a craftsman. So that's where we're at now. Any further ideas 
what connects those professions please do type away hard work absolutely yeah the uh, adapting to what happens salesmanship good ideas good ideas okay performance service and value never stop learning yet we're getting some really good stuff and I'm not arguing and, and saying that any of those are wrong in fact they're all right okay well here's where we get very close to the answer here is the key to success represented visually the key to success I'm looking for one word one word right now somebody's got it and the key to success is it's all about relationships and the first person to get that was James Ingle James Ingle we've also had a couple of others as well come in there uh, we actually had a few more coming in so well done on all of those people first person in my list is James Ingle um, so so great work on that um, so and why why is it all about relationships well ultimately when we first start working with people we see these things we hear words we see body language we get the 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 idea of what's going on but that's above the surface what we're looking for as coaches is to get deeper to get beneath the surface to those beliefs those values those experiences those fears those dreams those feelings and how powerful is it when we can get really tap into somebody's psyche and and understand really what drives them, really what they're dreaming for, and what they're scared of, and what their beliefs are. Because then as a coach, we, we have an ability there to, to get there, and to, to get into that, and get some serious results. But you'll notice on the left here, I put time and effort, or effort and time, and that's critical, because nobody will open up to you by just making some effort in the short term. But also, nobody will just open up to you and really get into it with you by just letting time pass. You've still got to make some effort there. You've got to make you've got to make effort and time to really get into what makes people tick, and then gear your programs and and your approach as a coach to that individual's drivers. And 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 there's a lot of good things out there. A lot of good words that were mentioned by you guys and. Along, along, along the way, but uh, for me, really, I'm going to talk about building your performance program tonight. I'm going to tell, tell you a lot about that, but this word relationships overrides that for me, because what, the better we are at relationship building, the better buy-in, the better understanding of our programs and our philosophies and our beliefs we can pass on to our athletes and, and gear it to what they're really dreaming about and their goals and, and therefore get results. So hopefully that makes sense and you can go with me on that journey a little bit tonight. And this is a great slide that I borrowed from Vern Gambetta. It's not about X's and O's, it's about Jimmy's and Joe's. I've got to always remember that. It's about the people that we're working with, not the numbers. It's not about the sets and reps. And with that in mind, I mentioned Vern, I'm going, to, I'm going to share now a few lessons that I believe really are worth learning that I've made mistakes and things that I can hopefully pass on to you from a few people that are the best of the best in my opinion and the first one is this fella here Vern and I brought Vern over to the UK a couple of years on the trot and did two absolutely fantastic seminars and, and during that time and, and in between and, and since I've been obviously interacting with Vern and talking about these concepts and Vern always talks about fluent not robotic training we don't want to just be giving people something that they just repeat 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 uh, we've got to we've got to try and blend in some fluency because movement is not all about being robots we also need to move away from mindless type training where no thought happens we've got to have some decisions being made that we we want people that are free thinkers that can make decisions on the, the field or in life in general and that is an influence on our program. We've got to challenge people in a different way, not just giving them A, B, and C and then repeat. What we're trying to do is, is develop adaptable individuals and not adapted individuals. 
okay not not people who don't have the answers to different problems people who can solve things people who can move forward in an adaptable way uh, there's a there's a reason that the cockroaches are still around on this earth millions billions maybe I don't know of, of years they've been on this earth and they were on the planet the same era as the dinosaurs you know but the dinosaurs were extinct they, they couldn't adapt to their environment the changing environment well the cockroaches could they were adaptable and they're still here right now and what we want with our athletes is we want adaptable athletes people who can adapt to the different environments adapt to the different circumstances what replicate that in training in our preparation programs and I'm going to talk more about that and this is a powerful one. I'm going to build something before we endure it we can't endure a physical quality we do not possess we can't endure a physical quality we do not possess we've got to build it first and that's a really important concept I'm going to share a slide with you later on that Here's another of my mentors, fantastic guy, life and soul, Kelvin Giles. Uh, been around the block a few dozen times, and Kelvin always talked about get, you got to get brilliant at the basics, at the fundamentals. Not just as an athlete, but as a coach, we've got to be brilliant at coaching the basics. That's different. Brilliant at coaching the basics, those fundamentals. We've got to be specialists in general training, in general athleticism. That's where an athletic development coach or an S&C coach or a, a performance personal trainer earns their money and gets results by being a specialist in general training. We've got to give people those movement problems to solve that make them think, that let them own the process. See the link now between Vernon and, and Kelvin's approach, mindful versus mindless, adaptable, giving people movement problems to solve. We've got to tackle the physical first, then the technical, and the tactical. We've got to get that right. That's mandatory we get that right. We've got to get the physical there first because all the coaches do is demand more technical competence when they don't have the physical competence to underpin that. So it's the physical that's limiting the technical adaptations and therefore the tactical adaptations. And we've got to train skills under fatigue, technique under fatigue, and decision-making under fatigue. Where does the injuries happen, where do the breakdowns happen, where do the definitive moments of a sporting contest happen, they happen when fatigue is in the in the mix, at the end of the game, at the, at the end of the first half, or when specific periods of fatigue kick in, tough, tough and duff, we've got to prepare for it. And this movement puzzles is something that I really strongly believe in at the moment, and it's been a big part of my own development recently, because Here's what training normally looks like. We normally give someone something to do and then they repeat it. And then they repeat it again. And then we give them something maybe a little bit more challenging and, and we progress that accordingly. That's what training normally looks like. But what does sport or life, more importantly, look like? It's, it's, not, it's not a linear approach. There's loads of craziness. There's chaos in there. There's different problems being presented all the time that require a different answer. There's a disconnect between what training normally looks like and what sport and life looks like. We've got to try and replicate some of those decisions, some of those problems, some of those challenges, and get people thinking for themselves and able to adapt in a changing environment. Really, really big stuff to think about in your programs. Okay, here we go with the next little challenge from today. I'm going to bring you guys back in. We've got the 3E formula. Now, before I share this with you, I want to offer to you that I genuinely believe that any issue, any challenge, any difficulty in training can be traced back to the 3E formula. All right, I really do, and I'll sh and I'll sh share that with you in a second. Why I think that, but I want you guys to have a, a little blast at what you think those three E's stand for, and I'm going to give you the first person to nail that a free copy of my presentation that I did at the UKCA National Conference 
on mixed martial arts strength and conditioning lessons learned from the trenches. So please do type away your three E's into that, and I'm going to give the first person who nails that a free copy. That I'm going to send it to you. We sell it on our website for again 50, 60, 70 quid. I don't even know, um, but but it's worth having. It's a good talk. Gives you some really good uh, thoughts on it. I've got a few answers already coming in. Efficiency, energy, effectiveness. That's a good answer from Ben Gray. Not quite there. Energy, evolve, expect, David. Very good answer as well. Exercise, effectiveness, end goal. That's a good shout, Richard. Energy, efficiency, effectiveness, Dave. Energy, enjoyment, enthusiasm. We get a lot of energy. Can't fault you on that. Can I repeat the question? What are the three E's, Michael? Give me the three E's. The three E's that make a difference. The formula. Effort, efficiency, emotion. Efficiency. We're getting loads of effort and energy and efficiency. That's cool. All right. Nobody's nailed it yet. A good word come up there, Sam. I'll get to that in a second. A really good word. Engagement again. I don't think anybody's nailed it yet, but I'm sure that they will do. I'm going to give you. If you haven't had a go yet, make sure you've typed it in. If you have. Have another go because nobody's got it, and there's three words that begin with E that I want to share with you. Please do type in, and, and let's see if we can get a few more. Give give some stuff away. I'm going to look through these in a second when I reveal it. Last ten seconds. Who can nail it? More engagement, we get the better. Good answer again, Ben. Some people are getting one of the words, and and other people are getting a different one of those words as well. Energy is coming up a lot. Excellent, Gareth. That's a great word. You've got a good one there, actually. That's really cool. There's three other ones. There's some more in there. Experience. All right. I'm going to give you the answer, guys, and 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 you'll kick yourself at the end. Essentially, he could have just kept on, gone to the dictionary and, and listing words beginning with E, but uh, that would take all night. Here's what they are. Here's what they are. Here's the three biggest words in coaching for me right now, and they, they can solve all your problems. I'm going to ask you right now, are your sessions exciting? Are you as a coach engaging your client, and are you enabling them? And here's what I mean by that. First things first, are your clients or athletes excited to do the session that you're presenting them with? Are they really up for it? Are you giving them enough of the special stuff, the magic, to make them think, yeah, I'm up for that, I really want to do it? That's the first thing, because until you've got that, you're really struggling, you're on a back burner, you're on a back foot there. So that's the first one, are they, are they exciting? Are, there, are then we, or you, or us as coaches, then giving them the purpose behind the session. Why are they doing it? Why is it important? Because that really cements and secures that excitement and takes it to the next level. Are we engaging? Are we engaging with our athletes and giving them the why behind it? And finally, are we then enabling them? Are we, are we giving them the coaching cues, the tools to enable them to get results? Because it's great when we get results and we see some results and then we buy back in and then it's a loop because then the next session is even more exciting because they've got more results and it's just a, a big growing kind of sort of snowball rolling downhill to where it's an unstoppable force at the end. So I think if you're having a problem or if, you, if your client's results have, have, have waned a little bit, if you're not getting the same buy-in that perhaps you thought you, you did have, well, I think you can trace it back to this. Are you... Are you really getting into your athletes' mindsets and exciting them with the sessions that you're putting in front of them? Are then you taking the time to explain the purpose and the why and the engagement element of the program and the session? And then are you actually giving them the tools? Are you enabling them? You know, we, giving them the challenges, the, the problems to solve that allows them to see that development and getting those results. And I think that genuinely, I, I look back to any challenges that I've faced and, and, and athletes that 
perhaps have not been getting the same same development and buy-in from groups and I genuinely can sit, trace it back to this and you can underpin it with a lot of those things that you guys said you know energy a uh, big one was education are we educating them uh, are we uh, have we got the expertise or all of those words but that's a great great little formula right there for you and Nick Ward I want to credit him for that because he's a, a friend of mine he's one of our mentors the lead S&C coach for England golf and worked in the in the game for many many years and he, he showed us that when he did a presentation with the golfers and us a couple of years ago now and I think it's a really good little formula so please feel free to, to, to borrow and take it and take it on from there so that's another little prize there I'm gonna pick through the list at the end of this and make sure if, if somebody has got it we'll give you that prize um, I, got a, I got a couple of big prizes later to give away right at the end of this webinar so make sure you stay tuned Richard said he's got one. Yeah, you did, and quite a few people did. So, yeah, it's all good. We'll we'll, uh, we'll we'll get it sorted, mate. It's all good. Right. So I've talked to you now about the the best of the best. I've I've shared with you some thoughts on that. I'm giving you some of the, the secrets to coaching success. I'm now going to take you through six steps to to better programs. Essentially, this is building your performance program with six simple but critical key steps. And so here's the strength program that we started with. Right at the beginning, I showed you this. And essentially, this is irrelevant. What the sets and reps are is irrelevant. But you can't really tell me, and I can't tell you if this session's any good. Because we've got to bear a few things in mind. Why did I choose these exercises? What do they represent? The key point is what's been done before by this individual who's doing this program, and what's coming next. And really then, therefore, where did this program come from? And these next six steps will give you the ability to critically review and look at any different program and say, what's the considerations that needed to, to take him onto the next level? And some context. Well, a program really is just an exercise, an intervention to close a gap from where you are on the left to where you want to go on the right. And the program is what allows you to bridge that gap. It's the intervention that takes you from A to B. But it's always going to be a balancing act. We are always balancing the need to do with the nice to do. What the athlete really needs versus what they really like. Going back to our 3E formula, if we give them exactly what they need, in our opinion, we don't give them what they think, is, they, think they want to do, then that might not be that exciting for them. So we start to lose a little bit. So in a sense, we're always looking for the most appropriate program. And we've got to actually stop looking for, the, for a perfect program. There is no such thing as a perfect program. It's, not, it's a futile journey to search for that. Look for the most appropriate solution, balancing the need to do with the nice to do. And we've got to look at ourselves here as well. It's, it's what we, sometimes we put all the nice things that we like to do. We might like to do heavy squats and cleans every single session. And there's a bias towards that in our programs. Well, what does your athlete actually need? They might have no need to be doing that kind of stuff at all. Likewise, your athlete might love to do bicep curls in every session. And believe me, I've had plenty of athletes that like that. But if we do that all the time, they're not getting what they need. So it is a balancing act. There's a most appropriate solution. And the first thing to do is we've got to establish our end point. What are we actually trying to achieve with this? We're trying to get stronger? Are we trying to get ready for an Olympics? Are we trying to fight in the UFC? Are we trying to get leaner? Are we going to get faster? Are we going to get more endurance? Are we trying to do all three? We've got to have an end point because then we can reverse engineer that step by step and decide what we're doing in the next session. We've got to have that end point. But then we have also have, need to have a starting point, which is our assessment process. We've got to do a needs analysis. And we're going to look at the energy systems, the movement patterns, the injury sites. We're going to look at the research. We're going to speak to everybody we know and get more experience. And we need to do an assessment and evaluate where our athlete is and get some numbers on it. And we're going to split that assessment into two areas, a movement evaluation. How do they move? How's their range? Can they squat? Can they lunge? Can they do the shapes that we want them to make in the gym? But also the shapes that they need to make in the sport. And then when we put performance qualities into that movement, 
Can they squat with load? Can they do endurance and movement patterns under fatigue? Can they exhibit skill under fatigue? We've got to add performance qualities to that movement evaluation. We've got to be able to repeat it. It's got to be reliable. And we've got to get feedback so that we can give it to our athletes and say, this is where you're at right now. And we can give it to the coaches and say, this is where he or she is at right now. And then we've got to actually use that data. Numbers are no good just for the sake of using it. If we don't use it, numbers are just numbers. We've got to use it to inform. So here's an example at the bottom. We've got an individual here where we look at all their performance qualities and compare them to from where they are to the world class level. So look, this is where you're at now. You need to improve on this, 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 and this. We've got a nice little graph there to, to inform it. It's easy to understand. That's what we need to do with our assessments. There's the end goal, the world class, even better. There's where we are now, the pink specific athlete. Here's the program to help you bridge the gap. Step three is all about principles. It's got to be key in your sessions. And the amount of programs, the amount of training sessions that I see that I kind of think, you know, this is just not following solid principles of training. It's amazing. And the big, there's lots of principles of training, but the big ones that I'm talking about today are, are, are these few. The principle of progressive overload. Are we really pushing our athletes? Are we overloading them from a load perspective in a, a strength session? Are we overloading them from a skill perspective? Are we overloading them from an endurance perspective? Are we overloading them from a movement perspective? And is it progressive? Are we jumping from two sets of five to seven sets of five? That's not progressive. That's just stupid. We're going to do progressive overload. Specificity. Are we thinking about the sport? Are we looking at the sport demands and think and suiting it to that individual? I'm going to show you a slide in a minute that hopefully simplifies a lot of the overused things about weighted golf clubs and you know all of that kind of stuff. That it's, I'm not talking about that with specificity. I'm talking about what does the sport look like and how can then we replicate that? Principle of reversibility. If you don't use it, you lose it. So we've got to look at that in our periodization and make sure that we're not losing qualities that we need to possess. And the principle of individualization. We've got to train the athlete in front of us to make sure that we're actually giving them what they need. If we just look at the sport and say, well, rugby players need this, that's no good because we might have a 14-year-old who's growing at the speed of light. Who, it, we're just going to break him if we give him what rugby players need in inverted commas. And coaching is critical here as well. We might have a great program that says it's going to overload them, but unless we take the lead in the session, say, you're doing this on the bench or you're doing this in the squat rack, then we, de we have control and we can get the overload there. Very easy to lose those principles when it comes to coaching, especially when you've got a group of 20 people who will just go off and do their own thing unless we as coaches manage that. So are we following the principles of training in our coaching and our program design? And step four is building it and then learning to endure it. And I want to credit Vern again, as I said, for this. And here's how I take, here's my take on this. Everything we do, we want to have these three things involved. And this is my philosophy right here of training. Everything needs to have a purpose. We need to understand why. Everything needs to be done with quality or a desire to be doing it with quality from a learning process, mastery, if you want to call it that. And everything needs to be done with intent. The drive to do something fast, to do something explosively. And that's the same whether you're doing one to five reps or whether you're doing whatever the sport dictates at the, at the closer to the season or closer to the event. So those three things are inherent in building it and learning to endure it and in training. We've got to develop athleticism in this lower end here all year round. And then we look at the specific work closer to the sport. And from a program emphasis, how that looks is something like this. Closer to the sport, we're going to be doing sport-specific endurance and, and efforts there. Underpinning endurance is this, this quality I call strength and power endurance. So you can't have endurance unless you've got strength and power endurance necessarily. You can't, have, you can't have power, sorry, power endurance unless you've got some power in there in the first place. 
and you can't have strength endurance unless you've got some strength there in the first place. And actually you can't have much power unless you've got strength there in the first place. So we've got to build strength, then power, then power and strength endurance, then endurance. We'll do it like that. And here's an example of an exercise and how I would look to do that from a training perspective. So we take a, a power clean as an example. Well, in the strength phase, we might be looking at doing some dead pulls. So heavy, move heavy kind of deadlifts with a shrug at the end, the first part of the clean to build that specific strength for the clean. Then we might switch into a max power type of protocol and do six sets of two reps with plenty of rest. Get some serious load on, some big explosive strength movements there, the power clean. Then we might look to say, well, we'll take that now and we'll turn that into some power endurance. We'll do a five by five power clean with two minutes rest. Stressing somebody in an endurance state there with a, a medium to heavy load. Then we might lengthen that out into a, a bit of a circuit or a tricep but in a controlled manner with quality, where we do four cleans, heavy cleans, then a medium weighted snatch, then a light loaded box jump, then plenty of rest, we set the timer and then they go again. And when they go again, they go back round from the box jump, they go again, they've got to beat the time that they did last time. That's feedback based training right there. And we've got a heavy, medium and light loaded tricep for power endurance. And then we get closer to our sport specific event, whether it's rugby, whether it's mixed martial arts, whatever the sport is, netball, and we might do continuous five minute efforts that have quality in them. So let's take that back a little set, a bit and, and, and if you like flip this on its head, let's say we started with massively strenuous continuous five minute efforts at the beginning here. What would happen? And we flipped it on its head and we ended up with cleans here. What would happen? Well, let's go back to our philosophy of these three words. We still would have purpose. The, the, the athletes would understand maybe why they're doing something. They would be trying their absolute best. They really would. But the quality wouldn't be there. So we have to build the quality in, then give them the ability to endure that with the power endurance and, the, and then the specific endurance. And that's building it and learning to endure it. And this, you could call that periodization, but it's, it's just common sense, folks. For me, you know, this is just like, why do something without quality? Well, change it up, do it, make, change the exercise, reduce the load, make sure the quality's there. Super simple. Purpose, quality, and intent all the time. Step five is specificity, and then exercise selection. And this is a slide that I borrowed from UK Athletics, and it, it really just simplifies specificity here. Excuse me, I'll take a sip of water. I've been speaking a lot today, just one second. I'm back. So we've got our little pyramid, and at the base of the pyramid and further out, we've got our general preparation exercises, and then further towards the top, we've got our more specific exercises and that's closer to the event. So we go general to specific. When we look at the far right, that summarizes it pretty well. The, the, further, the closer to the season or the competitive endeavor, the more specific you need to get with your exercises. The more you really do need to think about what's coming up. So if it's rugby, you might be, you might be playing a, a squad or a team that are very physical, so you've got to do some more wrestling or grappling based preparation. Or likewise, you might be playing a side that are very much running based, so you've got to do more endurance or, or sprint based activities to make sure that you're preparing for that event specifically. Same with a contest with martial arts, same with netball. Further out, we can train the athlete more to their requirements and make sure that we're looking at their movement patterns and trying to fix them up ready to prepare for their event. The one little bone I have to pick with this is this is this um, rectangle talking about the number of exercises, and this is quite traditional. The further away from a contest you are, the more exercise you do. The closer, the, the less exercise you do. You kind of pick them out. And for me, I, I think some of the things on motor learning and constraint-based learning and problem solving and, and those type of bits of research that are coming out would lend itself to, to giving more variation 
more of the time, to stimulate people in a different way more of the time. And I, and I think that we've got to be a little bit careful to give people just a few, number, a few exercises to work on that we run the risk of them just becoming adapted to those exercises and not necessarily challenging them in that way. Um, so that's kind of that's sort of where I'm at with it. And Ben's asked, would that depend on the sport as well? Um, I think the structure of this is fairly sound in that the closer you get, the more specific to the sport you're going to get. I think it, the athlete is you've got to have a, a, a philosophy on that. If we're training young people, we've got to understand and, and have an acceptance and expectation that we need to train the athlete for longer and not necessarily think about the competition but the nature of sporting contests in the UK and how we are in the West means that coaches do want the wins, the big W's there even though it's a 14 year old well we've got to fight that little battle a bit as well. The number of exercises, does it depend on the sport? Um, I think it, again it depends on the athlete more than the sport, what they can tolerate and what they can handle for me there. And uh, and also the time and there's a lot of other considerations there. Um, I think for me, if you if you doesn't matter necessarily the sport. Every, all sports need multiple physical qualities. You're always up against it, trying to fit in. The, you're you're always trying to you're always having to get rid of something out of your program, no matter what it is. So for me, that that's really about what the athlete can tolerate and handle. Um, hopefully that answers your question. So that's step five there. And just a little thought on exercise selection. We, we need to have a goal of that phase, whether that phase is strength, power, power endurance, endurance, if it's a hybrid, whatever we're trying to achieve there. Within that phase, we then need to have a hierarchy of exercises. And at the top of that hierarchy are the non-negotiables, the exercises that absolutely have to be in that phase. And they're the critical exercises that we must have in our program. They're the ones that we need, and then some of these start going into the nice territory. So we might have some assistance movements that support those critical exercises. If we've got time, we'll get we'll put them in. We might then have some supplementary work that underpins that as well. Again, if we've got time, we'll put it in. And then underpinning that, and possibly even on the side of that, is our what I call special conditioning, which is athlete movement specific work that goes all the way through. And I, I could go into a lot more detail on these and how to kind of manage this, but uh, it's, a, it's a, a topic for another day. I cover this a lot more on our mentorship program. But essentially, we've got to have an understanding and a hierarchy of these critical exercises. And critical differs between the athlete and between the sport as well. So two athletes of the same sport won't have the same critical exercises because they're built differently. They've got different biomechanics, they've got different training history, they've got different background. One might be six foot two, one might be five foot two. They're not necessarily both going to get strong doing back squats. Would have look and be a bit smarter than that. So it's an athlete specific consideration. And it's also different between sports. Critical strength work for Rugby may well be different for tennis. So we've got to have a look at the sport, and that goes back to when we're doing our needs analysis and our sport assessments at the very beginning as well. And we need to have progressions in all areas and all exercise streams. And what I mean by that is that if we're training a group of 20 people at the same time, then some people are going to have more advanced exercises than others and we've got to have a way of programming that and arranging for it to happen and it's got to be in all areas it's got to be pushing pulling we've got to be doing it in hip dominant and knee dominant and twisting and we've got to have progressions there from complexity to load to you know etc etc and we also need to earn the right to progress and that's important from an individual, from a pro progression standpoint. I mentioned variability, adaptability, mindfulness. We've got to give people progressions to work through that they earn the right to progress to the next exercise because that's engaging, isn't it? When you've got a challenge, when you've got to get to the next thing, that's engaging. 
And here's an example of that, that it's fairly old piece of work that I did when I was back at British Tennis, it's 2007 or so, but it's fairly solid and, you know, there's different levels here of pushing exercises. So before you get to bench press, you've got to be able to show me that you can do really good press-ups on toes, really good lowers and really good press-ups off the knees. You might come in at level three, no problem, and we can look at level four and five and six then. Pulling, the same thing. Before we get to chin-ups, let's get to chin-up lowers and let's do chin-ups with a band. And then let's get wider grip and let's get weighted chins in there. Squats, we've got to do, before we get to back squats, we've got to do some front squats. We've got to do front squats facing the wall with our hands on our head. We've got to do hip hinges and get those right. And it goes on and on and on. We've got to have an earn the right philosophy to demonstrate movement competency all the time. We've got to have those in order, folks, because otherwise your sessions look like craziness. It's just, it's just chaos when you're in there. There's no order to it. So it's, it's something that really will help to have right. They've got to go from that to that to that, and that's how we do it, and that's my philosophy, and that's where we're at. And then finally, in step six, we actually write the program. We've gone through all that. We've worked out our endpoint. We've done our assessment. We've worked out our progressions. We've, we've thought about the critical exercises for that athlete and that sport. We've, we've weighed it up. We've looked at the time we've got. Then we put the program together. And for me, it's real simple. Here's an example of two 60-minute sessions a week. We've got some pushing and pulling. We've got some squatting and lunging knee and hip dominant stuff. We've got some bracing and we've got some rotating. And we're going to have maybe three, no more than three physical qualities. We're going to have some power work at the start of the session when we're fresh, strength work to follow, and then we might do some work capacity or specific work at the end. Any more than that, and it goes a little bit to pot in there and it's total body sessions all the time and um, so simple but even then even then it's not finished because then we're going to look at this program and we're going to put it through the ringer we're going to balance it for that buy-in factor is it exciting have we balanced the need to do with the nice to do are they going to look at this and say, yeah, I'm having that. I'm all over it. I'd much rather have them have to have that reaction than for us to present our near-perfect program to them that they look at and think, nah, that's a bit boring. You want to get them absolutely all over that program, ready to go. We're going to balance it for the buy-in factor at the end. And then we've got a great program. And even then when you get in the gym, you're going to have to change it. You're going to have to scribble a few things out. Always have a little pencil or a pen next to you so you can jot down a few things when you're writing your program. So I want to summarize these six steps to success from a program perspective. We've got to assess and we've got to have goals, and then we therefore design a program to close the gap. We then need to select our exercises with a consideration of what's coming before this and what's coming next, what's our progression and what's our regression. And we're going to be quick on those in the gym to adapt and move and change it up. We're going to follow our 3E formula. Does it tick the boxes? Is it, engage, is it engaging? Is it exciting? And are we enabling them with the coaching cues and the puzzles that we're giving them? We're going to really fine-tooth comb our programs to make sure they're principle-based. If we're trying to get strength out of somebody and we're programming three sets of ten, it's probably not going to get them strong unless... They've never done anything before. Likewise, we might have three sets of five in there for strength, which is great, but if we're not pushing them on the load in the session, it's still not principle-based. So coaching and programming work hand in hand. And always and always we learn by doing. We learn by doing, by getting your hands on athletes, thousands of hours of seeing movement patterns, of writing programs. It doesn't happen overnight but it does follow a, ver a very simple systematic process for me and it's 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 not it's simple but it's not easy it's simple but it's not easy you do have to practice and if you've got any questions on any of that at all type them in right now and I'm going to answer all those questions at the end of the talk I want to don't forget I've got some really cool prizes to give away in around about 10 minutes time.
So um, that's where we are on the program side of things. And, and, and how this integrates with the mentorship, well, essentially this presentation is a good example of, of how we present on the, the mentorship. And we have these every every week in our in our portal that we deliver live with myself and our Director of Education, Lawrence Bloom, who's the, also the Head of Sports Science and Medicine at Charlton, top, top guy, top caliber. It's an accelerated development program taking you rapidly forwards and we look at these three pillars when we come, when we get people on the program to, to be a, a fantastic coach and build a great career is hand in hand you can't have a you can't be a great coach and unless you've got people to coach so you've got to have your nuts and bolts here to take care of you've got to be good you've got to know what you're doing and have the tools you've also got to have an understanding of why you're doing it and have a purpose of what your goal is and we absolutely hammer you on that when you join us on the mentorship and get massive clarity on what your purpose is. And then we've got to work out how we're going to get there, how we're going to get clients, how we're going to get that job in professional sport, which we've seen countless times in our nine-month phase of people developing like that. And that's giving you the tools there. Personal development is, is underrated. And I know it gets a little bit fluffy and we're all coaches and we don't want to talk about our feelings <laughs> well we got to get out our own way and we've all got limiting beliefs to say why we can't achieve something and and very often it takes years to figure that out well if you've got somebody tapping away there and, and challenge you challenging you to say why can't you achieve that in nine months why will it take you three years doesn't matter if everybody else has done it in longer time why do you have to follow that that the herd there why can't you be a leader Sometimes you need someone to say that to you and then to hold you accountable for that. We've got to do more on this and we really do focus a lot on that, on the mentorship program. And those three pillars, I just want to reiterate, it's all about having the tools to deliver and, and be able to coach at the highest level. Having the tools to manage yourself and check yourself and constantly reflect and say, is this right for me and correct your own course or also have somebody else that can correct you course when you veer off true north do you have the tools to build a business do you have the tools to market yourself to get clients yeah you can't be a fantastic coach unless you've got clients or athletes and you marketing is critical and, and marketing all that means is connecting with people are you an expert at connecting with people back to building relationships really important we have 26 modules that we deliver over nine months. Everything from the athlete assessment in detail, the sport assessment in detail, planning, designing resistance training programs, designing speed programs, agility programs, endurance programs, work capacity, long-term athlete development, planning the cycles, the microcycle, the mesocycle, the macrocycle, resistance training progressions, talked about that tonight, how to develop high levels of transfer of training, talk about specificity, coaching relationships, how to get in with teams and coaches and make sure you've, you're a valuable member, plyos, plyometrics, great way to explode, to get explosive athletes, mobility and stability, core training, advanced strength and power, advanced program design, must, our master coach program, preparing for that, loads and loads of content delivered all the way through and it's underpinned with our live coaching clinic every three months bring everyone in, really what I call a total immersion program, phones off, absolutely in the mix, practical work with world class coaches. Every single month you get your mentor in there and we get people on every single month to this mentorship, it's cool. Our three day live event, our northern bases at Yorkshire Cricket Club, world class training facility, southern bases, Surrey County Cricket Club. And what we do with that is bring you in three days again nobody else in there just mentorship people practical workshops from people like Ian Fisher at Yorkshire guaranteed speed how to get faster athletes Dave Hembra how to get fundamentals of coaching right guy who's been there and done it with the best athletes people like Kel Brook world champion boxer and volleyball Olympic GB volleyball coach Yusef Xu talking you through Olympic weightlifting fantastic to get someone of Yusef's caliber talent coach for British weightlifting right there 
I'll also I also do stuff on it. I did warm ups. I did stuff on combat conditioning. I did stuff on movement and agility in this last event. I'd also do stuff on the strength side. Danny uh, Darren Stratton, you've already heard from him today. He's an absolute specialist on mobility. Danny Haig talking about power training in there again. A guy who's working at the highest level with pro athletes, sharing his methods. We also had Nick Ward from England Golf talking about how he gets results and how he assesses and his template for assessments. It's all yours. You take it straight away, all recorded. You get instant access to it as well. Ian Piper presents Alistair and Johnny Brownlee's personal strength and conditioning coach. Personal friend of mine is also a mentor on our course. Can't get better than that. Can't, can't get somebody like that giving you their stuff for you know, anywhere else. It's, it's unbelievable. It's a really valuable process to go through. But not only that, we've got our learning portal. We put all our sessions on there, all the modules up there. You get a login. If at any point you've got a program, you're designing a program for your athlete, or you you want to get some feedback on a program that you've written, just upload it to the portal. We'll give you a critique on it. And it's a video kind of feedback saying, how about changing this for that? How about putting squats instead of deadlifts? How about some more single leg work? You've done a bit too much pulling and not a lot of pushing. That program's great. Go for it. It's really cool. Just giving you thought to take on board and apply uh, and work with. You can also put videos in there. Your own athletes might be coming back from injuries, just struggling to get them moving well. What can you do? We'll give you some ideas. Your own training will get you upskilled on all the lifts and go away, practice it, and then and then post in there in the learning portal. Fantastic way for it for experts to give you feedback. It's a really valuable process. Our Facebook group surprised me, but it's amazing. It's absolute epic kind of experience where you've got 60, 70 like-minded individuals just all smashing it. It makes it makes you raise your game. It's a non-disclosure environment. Whatever goes on in there is within that group. You can say what you want. You can express your true opinion. You can if you're having a real challenge with somebody, you can completely express that with the, with the group and you'll get really honest feedback and it just keeps you on your game. We talk about business in there. We talk about strength and conditioning. We have business modules that we put into the Facebook group. We have critiques on websites. It's all there. It's a fantastic supportive community. It's it's a wow factor right there and it's, it's crazy that that is just such a cool thing to, to be a part of. We've also got our resource center. It's a membership site that you get access to. We drag all our videos in there that support the modules. So we do a module on the assessment process. You then get a video of me taking one of our athletes through that or a seminar where I've shown people how to assess and, and use the exact template and you get that template as well. You can literally take that, watch it on a Sunday night, apply it on a Monday morning and you've got access to Hours and hours and hours of world-class coaches, people like Dan Baker, Vern Gambetta, Kelvin Giles, Mike Boyle, you can see on the screen there. All uh, private, purely for your use on the, on the mentorship program and for your own development. It's a hugely valuable asset. You'll be a fully qualified senior strength and conditioning coach at the end of this. We'll mentor you through your level three qual. Part, we partnered up with First for Sport because they're a reputable, credible organization. Same as the likes of rugby, tennis and cricket and it's a senior coaching qual and we've got all the templates everything ready for you to take your assessment so that at the end of this qualification at the end of the mentorship you can get your certificate you can get your insurance you'll be able to approach sports teams and clubs and present everything to them and, and, and they'll recognize it it's, it's already partnered with the RFU we've got great relationships with other governing bodies as well and it just gives you that extra level of credibility and confidence and competence. You can open up your own gym with the insurance off the back of this and we can some of our mentors in the group will help you do that because they've done it. It's, it's all there. It's a really cool qualification, again worth some good money. For me, the catalyst, the glue that makes this happen is the personal mentorship you get. We allocate you a personal mentor. Once you've registered for the course, what happens is we send you a coach profile sheet and you really take some time to assess where you're at now and where you want to go. 
if you like, it's like that coach profile sheet equivalent of the athlete assessment. Then we allocate you a mentor that's going to work for you. Somebody who can take you from A to B rapidly. Somebody who's done it. Somebody who's in an area that you want to be in. Perhaps you want to open your own gym in the next couple of years. Well, why not open it in nine months and work with one of our mentors who's already doing it? Perhaps you want to work in professional sport. Well, why not work? Why not choose the sport and work with someone like Lawrence Bloom in football, Ian Fisher in cricket, Stuart Yule, the high performance coach of the year last year in rugby, Jared Deakin in rugby. You know, it's it's there for you if you want to work with Olympic sports. We've got Ian Piper in the triathlon side of things. If you want to have a kind of what I call a hybrid approach, where you want to work with athletes, but also you want to have some PT in there, and it's an, an, an additional string to your bow in the business that you've already got, then you can work with one of our mentors who's doing that. If you want to have use the strength and conditioning credentials and experience as a as a way of really positioning yourself as an expert in your PT business right now and, and give you an edge over the competition. Absolutely. That is what we're used to and that and that's that is exactly the type of person that will benefit so much from our mentorship program. We've even had physios on, people who want to get a better understanding, people in pro football who uh, are at a high level in the premiership have been on our course. We've had award-winning coaches that are now coming back in to mentor for us. People all over the all over the world are joining up. We've had the guys from Australia looking into it now to partner up with us. And um, we've got people in Europe on the mentorship program. It's 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 totally flexible for you. And that mentorship, that personal coaching, and that access to that elite team of coaches who are all at the top of their game really does define this program and it's the difference that makes the difference. You've got all that other stuff anyway. You will accelerate your development with our quals, with our theory components, with our Facebook group, with our portal, but having somebody there that can troubleshoot with you and talk to you one-on-one, -on -one, it's absolutely critical and we really do hammer you on your coaching and personal and business development and really just get you to take massive action. That's what makes things happen. It doesn't. Nobody talks about it and gets anywhere. It's action that makes the difference. And it's accountability that we provide that makes you take that action. Really is critical. There's no price for that. It just isn't available. It's such a powerful process. And earlier on, I, I said to you that it was the best development opportunity for coaches and PTs in this country right now. And I've hopefully given you a pretty solid overview of where we're at with it. We've got so many testimonials, we've had so many transformations of people's lives on this program, it's just unbelievable. And you can obviously check that out on the link that I that I sent, that I put in the group earlier, and now we'll put in for you in a second. Um, but but it really is, and I hope I've persuaded you on that. And the thing is, it's, it's an investment. You know, you, you're getting such value and, and quality out of this, it's not a cheap course, and it shouldn't be a cheap course, because that that's not going to push you to get to the best of your ability rapidly. It's worth well over £8,000. You know, we haven't even put in the Facebook group or any of the other kind of specific elements in the resource in there. It's worth eight grand, without question. We're starting on May the 11th, and we are rapidly approaching the, that 15 places full. We've already got either 10 or 11 places taken as of the end of today. I know some of the guys in the office were still on the phone um, when I left to, to get home and, and get this webinar done tonight. Um, so we, we, we've got a few places left at that price, and then the price goes up to uh, 20, 2800 plus VAT. It's an investment. You can pay it off up front or you can pay it monthly, but we really want to work with absolute action takers and people who we can take to the next level. You need to jump on over to strengthandconditioningmentorship.com forward slash list. I think Darren will probably put something in the group. In fact, he has. If you check your chat box, he's going to put that in the group. Um, to, sorry, in the chat box to make sure you can check it out. And what we've decided to do is just for this evening is 
to give you a little present for listening to this webinar, and I said I'd do it earlier on, and I'm I'm really chuffed with this, and I'm genuinely I've never done this before. Um, so that's pretty cool. And what we're going to do is we're going to for anybody who excuse me, I'll grab a sip of water. For anybody who jumps on over to strengthandconditioningmentorship.com forward slash list and goes through our application process tonight and decides the mentorship is for them, what we do is we jump on the phone with you. It's an application only process, so you're not guaranteed a place at all. It's only for people who are really ready to move forward and and get a a serious, serious progression in their career and business and competence as a coach. Anybody who goes over to that page tonight and fills it out, we're going to give you 500 quid's worth of our best resources. I'm going to throw in all of my performance uh, collection. It's strength and conditioning athletic development stuff that you're going to get out of that. There's 15 or so videos in one bundle, everything like core training considerations, how to design resistance training programs. Um, I'm going to throw in all my combat DVDs. I'm going to throw in all my series called Right Here, Right Now, which is all about the fluency and the problem solving and the mindfulness. There's some strength stuff in there. There's literally a shed load of resources there that we sell on our website. You can check it out. Sell it for well over 500 quid. And we're going to, I'm going to throw in my more, most recent collection of videos, which is Combat Performance Training for Sports, which is about how to integrate wrestling and grappling and martial arts movements and body weight exercises uh, in a really thorough video collection and it's got different games that you can play, different warm-up drills that can engage people. It's the ultimate kind of engagement and an exciting sort of training tool. It's got a load of body weight kind of solutions in there and if you head over to strengthandconditioningmentorship.com forward slash list you can grab all of that stuff by filling out our form and I'm going to show you what that looks like in a second. And ultimately it's about how much you want it and what it means to you. You know, we can really push forward with you and take you to the next level, but it's it's got to be driven internally and it's it's about where you want to be. And if you're thinking about moving forward or if you're watching other coaches develop and you kind of think that's where I want to be. If you're watching people do great things and you're thinking, I don't know what to do, or how do I get there, or what does what's he or she done that, that I that I need to do? If you've seen people that are a few years older than you or a few years further down the line that you kind of think, I want to be there in a couple of years, well, why not be there in nine months? You know, let's think big right here. That's the first challenge I've got for you right now. Think big. Why not be there in nine months? Why not get that gym open in nine months? And why not get that success? And then imagine where it could be in two or three years after that with that approach what does it mean to you to get to that success how much do you want it and how much does it mean to you to move from where you are now you know we've had people that have really gone from working in corporate jobs in the city to being a full-time coach and work with elite athletes we've got people who work been working in commercial gyms who have gone from really not enjoying what they're doing and almost being burnt out to getting out of that environment and positioning himself and getting experience in sport and really getting fulfillment from it. We've got people who've gone from experience coach status to, to really genuinely top of the game and, and in, in a, a serious network where they're presenting all over the world. One of our mentorship students a couple of years ago had very little s &C experience. I saw and spoke to him the other day, he's presenting at the International Tennis Performance Conference in, in Las Vegas. And it's it's all legit. It's all genuine. We've worked together. He's done the hard work, and he wanted it. Well, what does it mean to you to get where you want to go? That's what we want to hear from. We want to, we want people who are really ready to take action and and get involved. When you do click on that link, you'll be greeted by this page, and it's Liana. You can watch her. She's done really well in herself, but you can watch our video. What check out all the testimonials. Make sure that you've had a good read through and and all the modules and get super excited and if you if you've kind of listened to me today and thought you know this is it this is the one I want you need to click on the button that says speak to team and that button will take you to this page which tells you you've got 30 spaces on the course and you need to take some time to fill out this 
form. And once you've filled out that form, it'll come back to my team in the office and we will reach out to you to in, in, uh, arrange a conversation. And here's the bottom line. We haven't got many spaces left, but what we are prepared to do is say, look, if you're able to get on the phone, if you fill out this form tonight or tomorrow morning, first thing, but tonight, because then you'll be first in the queue for tomorrow, we'll get on the phone tomorrow. Give us a time that's good for you tomorrow and or over the weekend if you can't make tomorrow. We'll get on the phone with you and then provided you're up for it and, and we kind of said, say that the program is right for you and you, you get offered a space, um, which you know it doesn't always happen, but if you're ready to take action, there's no reason why you, you, you can't. Provided that's the case, we'll, we'll get you registered for the course tomorrow and we will send you that 500 quid bundle of resources instantly. You get that instantly. Ready to watch, get learning this weekend, get excited, and you're ready to go for the 11th of May. And that's the best deal we've had, or, or kind of offer we've put out there on the mentorship ever. Um, and all I've got to say is, any questions, folks, I'd love to, to hear them from you. There might be some from the Building the Performance Program webinar and any of the six steps or any of the coaching questions, anything like that, um, that we can help you with. I will definitely get in the mix there. I've already got a couple of messages from people. Ben said, happy to place deposit. Uh, I'm sure ready to sign up. I need this. Uh, we've had form filled out. I'm hooked. Thank you very much, Richard. That's great. I'll be definitely in touch. Um, we don't have many intakes. We don't. We're going to recruit this month for May, and that is it for the year. Um, so we're going to take through. We want to make sure that the quality is right, and we, because we're gearing up for our master coach course with the current mentorship guys at the end of September, you see. So you guys, will, if you register for it, will be eligible for that, of course. At the end of your course, we're going to put everything we've got into that. Um, so definitely act now and get in the mix and get involved in May. Uh, Laura's asked, "I live in Houston. Can I still sign up?" Absolutely. We've got people in Europe, we've got people in Australia that, are, that have applied and probably will take a couple from, from down under. We can have people in Houston, absolutely. And, it, and in fact, we've got great links and whatnot over there in, in the States to hook you up with people and introduce people like Ron McKeefrey and Jim Kilbasso and those those top guys over there that would that, that love to, to interact with you, Laura. So if you're able to get on an internet connection on a regular basis and and listen in, then you, you're, in, you're very much welcome on our mentorship program, provided it's right. Um, is there an age limit to this? That's a great question. Never had that question before, but absolutely not. We've actually got, in, in this current intake, we've got two guys who are late 50s and one guy early 60s. Retired and passionate cycling coaches started a second business, realized the importance of strength and conditioning to cycling. So they're, they're registered there. On, in fact, Steve might even be on this webinar tonight. Steve Cronshaw, um, look him up. He's got a great business, great coach, and really thoroughly enjoying the program. Uh, we've got Dave Chaplin, not a relative of mine, uh, despite the name, who's in Ipswich, who is working in tennis down there, and he's, forgive me for saying it, high 50s, low 60s. It's, uh, it's not a restriction at all. I don't know how old you are, Ollie, but please do type in, and I'm sure... We'll we'll uh, we'll, um, we'll be fine on that. Uh, how frequent is the program running, Thomas? Question from Thomas. We've literally got one intake left this year, and um, we're going to put everything we've got into this May intake, and we'll hopefully have a fantastic. Well, we will have a fantastic group of 30 people. It will sell out. Um, we, we've got a few weeks left, but we're already moving up there, and we've only got. We're close to that, as I say, 10 or 11 by the time I left today. We haven't even officially, believe it or not, we haven't even officially opened recruiting yet. We've not put a post on Facebook or on the website or anything like that saying we're, we're, we're recruiting, we're launching this. Um, so we, we're already kind of a third full before we've even launched it. Uh, a question here from Richard. I'm going to also bring Darren back in here if you want to chip in on anything, Daz. Um, question here. I work in the middle of nowhere, 
where S&C isn't in demand, I have an urge to move into the bigger areas of the country where the industry is in high demand. Can you help with this on the mentorship as in links to places where job opportunities are available? Yeah, I mean, that's a good question and it's not an uncommon one and we've got some people on the course who are in like the Scottish Highlands. Uh, we've got some people in Cornwall and absolutely fantastic work they've done to, to really educate people down there to, to, and up there to the value of this. Um, but in terms of, that's one angle that we will certainly help you with. The second angle is more about introducing you, bringing into our network of coaches. So I don't know where you're based. If you want to write down where you're based, um, I'm more than happy to to kind of on the line now give you some specific feedback that what what we could probably do for you. And uh, we, we've seen it countless times before. We've had people in the, the depths of Wales, and uh, we've got people in, uh, as I say, the northern parts of Scotland and and right down in Cornwall that are all smashing it on the program and, and exactly what you said, we connect you with the right people and we also give you the tools to educate those people that are already there. Sometimes you're surprised how much people do embrace it um, in there as well. Uh, Rob Smith, you missed the last 10 minutes, no worries, you can chip in now, it's alright. Um, Dan, I'm a paralegic wheelchair basketball player, I'm all over this, will the things I'm not able to do hold me back in the course? One of my colleagues, and I, I know that you probably may well have come across Ali Jawad. Ali's a, a friend of mine, but he's somebody who's presented uh, one of our workshops before, and Ali's a Paralympic powerlifter, and Ali's loving it as a as a kind of his work as a a powerlifting coach, an SNC coach. And if you're a great communicator, if you've got a good relationship building ability, and and you can obviously learn an element of that as well. There's no reason why you can't have an absolutely fantastic career as an SNC coach, and I'd love to to work with you. I think I don't care about any of that. It's more about where you're at with with what you want to do in your life, and if you're ready to really push forward. And if that's you, and you're ready for that kind of development, um, then please do apply, and, and we'll get in the mix. Uh, Laura's made a comment here, a question. Just need to know how much time I'll need to do this well, do this well? It's a great question. Well, the, the webinars and the sessions are uh, about between an hour and t an hour and sort of one to three hours a week. Uh, but then anything that you do on your own development is actually, you should be kind of doing that anyway. We just sort of push you and target you to take that forward. I think to do it well, you would want between two and, and ten hours a week as a, as a fair kind of statement. But what I always say to people is this is not designed to be a takeover course. This is not designed to be a takeover of your life. This is not about that. It's it's a complementary program that complements your existing business, your existing goals, your existing studies. We've got the girl you saw before, Leanne's up at uni in Edinburgh and she's studying full time and she's doing the mentorship and she's absolutely raving about it. She's loving it. And it's fitting in really well for her. It complements it because it gives you that catalyst to, to, re, to really move forward, it gives you the confidence, it gives you all those underpinning structures that you need to, to, to apply what you're doing in either your work or your business. If you're already, if you, even if you're working in an unrelated job, it's, it's there for you to take, um, to take to the next level there. Any thoughts on that, Daz? Um, yeah, I mean, I'd echo what you, what you said, really. Um, it's it I mean I I was um I had like a desk job, then I was coaching most evenings and I still went through the mentorship and found time and made it work. You know, if I think if you're really hungry for success and for me I was just desperate for a change. I was kind of sitting at a desk knowing that it wasn't what I wanted to ultimately do. Um I got, you know, it, the course was really flexible. There were some days where I just, you know, I couldn't make a webinar, but I could catch up on the weekend, or I'd have blocks where I could do a little bit more, other times where I could do less. Um, bearing in mind as well, if, you, if you're working with people and, and coaching people, whether that's as a personal trainer or a sports coach, whatever it may be, you know, that can be sort of part of your work towards the qualification and you're and applying the learning you've done. So we might learn something in a power module, and then I might try that out and implement it with some guys in the gym. 
you know, make sure it fits and kind of um, work it into their program, but keep things exciting for them. So I found some of the people I was working with got more and more excited, and every week when I worked with them, they'd be like, what did you learn last week? Because they'd be, they almost got, couldn't wait for the new ideas because it made it fresh for them. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, and we've and we've seen that quite a lot of times, haven't we? With with people mm. in there, that, that that momentum just builds, and the value of being in the group like that, the network just kind of everything just amplifies for for ev for everyone in the group, really. And it's it's just such a cool environment. Um, Richards mentioned about his location. You're in the Suffolk area in Norwich. Actually, that's where Dave Chaplin is, and we've got some other people down that neck of the woods as well. Um, Ipswich area. I think that's fine. Like we, we've got. A, I presented at the Ipswich Strength and Conditioning Conference. There's, there's definitely some interest and some buy-in into S and C there. But if, if you're really struggling on that, we can help you with it, and also put you in touch with people a little bit more central. Um, absolutely, no, no problem at all. Uh, Laura, you, you've got. Laura's got two kids, young children, and a few PT clients, but she really wants to succeed. Well. It's there for you, Laura, and you know. Again, it, if provided you've got the mindset to, to really push forward and and take this on, I, I don't see why we we can't see massive things with you. You know, we've got very quite. A, we've got a, in fact, we've got a fantastic group of, of female coaches on the current program who are really kind of doing fantastic things. You've seen Leanne. We've also got Mel. We've got Silke, and we've got. Two or three more coming in, Kat and, and a few others as well. Um, so we've got a really great group of female S&C coaches, and and it's great that we've got that because there actually isn't enough great PTs and S&Cs that females, in my opinion, you know, and and, and the best some of the best S&C coaches that I've ever worked with have been female S&C coaches. So you know, I've learned a lot from people like Narelle Sibter, who works with at British Tennis, and she's in Australia now. And Julie Twaddle again, a great, great S and C coach. It's really cool. Um, ben, who Ben Gray's asked if we want to promote this with other people, what's the best link to share with them? He's got a bunch of other very motivated PTs who did, who did the same PT course with European Institute of Fitness, and think this would be great for some of them. Yeah, that's very um, generous of you, and, and absolutely fine. And we can set you up with a code, uh, Darren. If you want to, I don't know if you can scrape together that link. We've got a a page on our website where if you've got people you think might be interested you can just type in and enter their details and also your name and then we if they will contact them if they do end up getting involved in the program if there's any places left and we and we it, and it makes it you know we make it happen uh, we, we also have a really really cool referral program that that you can take advantage of and that's same for anyone on the line if, if Darren Puts that link in there to to, to get in the mix and uh, and whatnot, which I know he's he's going to do that. Have you just put that in, Daz? Yeah, hopefully I've spelled referrals properly. But yeah, basically strengthandconditioningmentorship.com forward slash referrals, um, and you'll see a little bit of information on there actually when you go on. I think there's a little video from what I can remember. But um, yeah, I mean like uh, it, obviously um, it, the primary the primary sort of um, intention for that really for us was because lots of people go on the mentorship and realize the benefit of it and then have got lots of people that they want to share it with uh, so they can get in on the action too really so that's where that yeah. come about but yes yeah, certainly you can get yourself uh, you know some some great little uh, prizes and bits and bobs um, forwarding anyone on on for us there um, has anyone got any questions for me like because I will be honest with you I've been through the mentorship so um, you know, I know, I know, I, I'm sort of with strength and conditioning education, but we're we're on the call, and you know, if you if you've got worries about particular challenges or things, having been through it, I'm happy to answer anything you've got. Yeah, that's good. If you do have questions for Daz, you know, he's right there, ready to 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 um, to answer it. Uh, Jack said he says the page can't be found. Is that which link is that, Jack? Is that the Referral page or the main page. Um, Peter's asked, "Will it work for mobile trainers?" I've just left a commercial gym. It wasn't for me, and don't have a, 
a gym a home at the moment. I hope that means a gym home, not an actual home. You're not homeless. Um, in terms of mobile trainers, yeah, we've got we've had I don't know exactly how many, but we've had a, a, at least a dozen or so that have done really good things. And ultimately, if you can apply strength and conditioning principles and you benefit from me expert mentoring and, oh, and being, a, being a part of, of something that's kind of bigger than you and, and you really want it to, to help you push on and, and you've got some specific goals that we can really help you with um, and, and your mind is clear and you want to push forward, then it is the right program for you. You know, It's a fantastic program. Um, so without question, it'll work for you, Peter. It just depends on where you're at with your head at the moment, and if it's if it, if you are ready to take things forward, uh, because that's key for us. You know, we need to to get the right people on the program and, and go through application. But I'd I'd love to to hear from you and chat to you if you do think it's right for you. Absolutely. Um, Daz, have you put that link in now? Yeah, apologies. It was just I I got a bit trigger happy and stuck an S on the end, so it's just forward slash referral. Great, you've got that now, guys. Check that out. Um, when are the live sessions? That's a good shout. So, Laura, question from Laura. We do the online sessions weekly, and it's kind of happened to end up being Wednesday night, and that is when Lawrence and I are kind of both able. But most people, when we did a survey, said said that the evenings and and Wednesdays would work well. Uh, we also record them, so they'll be uploaded to the portal straight away so you get them and you'll be able to watch them whenever you want. So some people tune in live but quite a lot of people, life gets in the way and people coach and stuff like that and it's a complimentary course. So they end up essentially tuning in when they can. So it might be early in the morning, it might be on a weekend, they might do that plus a couple of videos on the weekend, that kind of thing. And um, that's totally up to you, that's totally flexible. What we do with the um, live events, the three-day live events, is that will be running in, we haven't confirmed a date yet, but it will be a Friday to Sunday, and it will be between late June and, and mid-July, one of those weekends, uh, so it will be confirmed in, in the very near future, but we we also film that event as well, so if, you, if you're concerned that you might not make it, it's not the end of the world in that we film it, um, and you will get copies of that, so you do get access to all those sessions at value. Um, but obviously, you know, it's great if you can come, and the more the merrier. And we'd love to have people on it. Hope that answers your question there. Dan says his application's done. Fantastic, mate. I look forward to it. Ben's got the form working. That's really good. I'm going to go back through some of these questions that I know I've missed. Um, Daz on this one. Mm -hmm. uh, let's have a look. Is that form? Is that uh, referral form working now, Dad? Yeah, that's okay now. Yeah. Ollie said he's only 15 and he's looking for further education after his sport coaching course at college. Yeah, fantastic. Good for you for tuning in and knowing what you want to do. That's really cool. And um, it's probably maybe a, a year or two away for you if you if you if you're struggling with it. But you know, keep in touch. Check out the more future webinars and give us a shout if we can help you. Richard is he said he's currently learning with Wabba. Would you recommend taking on this call to go on alongside? And sorry for bombarding me. That's all right, mate. Um, yeah, I mean we've got again we've got people that are studying for like undergrad degrees and 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 postgrad degrees as well. Uh, we've got people that are doing vocational quals, things like nutrition courses and you know that that sort of thing as well as their own studies. So it's it's totally manageable, and I'm sure it'll complement a lot of it and you, you know, we'll have some good discussions on some of the, the different things in there as well. Um, so, Richard, you know, it's 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 your shout there. If you if you're if you think this is the right course for you, then let's hear let's hear from you and and, and make it happen, mate. Um, Sam, you've worked. I notice you've worked with England Golf. What would your what would be your number one tip for an aspiring S&C coach working with books level golfers? Number one tip. Without question, work on your relationship building skills. You know, golf is a sport that it's a, it's it's all about speaking their language, and and at the very highest level as well as at the junior level. 
and if you can learn to speak their language and what I call speak the speak the sport language, then you will make it happen. And that's the same in all sports. So do your research and and and, and observe the cultures and see what you can do there. Um, the other thing I would say is keep it simple. Don't try and be too complicated with your programs or too fancy. Look at what you're going to make. It's called, I call it the difference that makes the difference. What are the things that you can do that really will add value straight away? It's and, I, and I'll give you a tip. It's not going to be some fluffy stability ball exercise. It really isn't. <laughs> I'm not slagging off any of that stuff, but I kind of am, but I'm not. And uh, But it's, it's going to be something that makes a big difference that you can have a, a real impact and that might be the way you communicate, it might be the effort you put into the program, it might be the simplicity of the, the program. So keeping it simple like that, squat, push, pull, lunge, rotate and brace. It's, it's really, really straightforward stuff. Um, and also join, you could join the mentorship, um, that would be my answer and then work with Nick Wald at England Golf and that will probably be a pretty good uh, opportunity builder for you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Nick's a great coach. He's a good guy, and you know, he's been around a long time, and he's he's a real leader in the UK as well as internationally. You know, he, he phoned me the other day asking if I was if I knew anyone who was interested in a in a in a work in a job in China, working with the Chinese athletics community, and I, I kind of said, wow, you know, that's a, let's put it in the mentorship. Um, we, we've had Nick asking things like that. We've had. People in Hong Kong asking for placements in Hong Kong. We've got a, a relationship with Pinnacle Performance over there that are doing really good things with Hong Kong Sevens and Hong Kong Cricket. And we're going to have a placement every year, at least one six-month placement out there. Um, but you know, Dave Hembrer and myself and, and Nick have all got quite a bit of experience in golf, and, and certainly we'll be able to help you with that, no question. Uh, Jack's asked about the monthly payments, how the monthly payments work. So, essentially, to secure your place, all you need to do is leave a £300 deposit, and then you can choose how you want to do it. You can pay the course off up front. We'll give you a little bit of a discount for doing that, um, but, but if you want to pay it monthly, that's absolutely fine as well. And so the monthly payments, essentially, we take the course, the price of the course, we take your deposit off, and then we divide it by nine, and you pay the first payment in May and the last payment nine months from May. And it works out at around about 286 a month, uh, and that's how it works. It's as simple as that. And we want to work with you, but ultimately, I, I always say to people, it's not about the payments necessarily, it's about the people. We want the right people on the course, and I'm not going to prioritize people that want to pay up front purely because they want to pay up front. I want to get the right people on this program that makes such a big difference for us. It's, it's, it's really, really important. Um, so hopefully that answers your question and it's it's an investment and it's something that as I say it should be an investment if it was 500 quid which obviously it could never be that it's not it's not gonna really demand that same level of commitment and people would have kind of respect it in the same way and also we have to pay our mentors we have to put on all these fantastic sessions it, it's 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 an investment for a reason it's an investment for you, but we've also got to make sure that we deliver that, and and we can't do that for you know it's it's not a, a cheap course for a reason, and and it will take you where you want to go, and you know if you're if you get the end of this nine months and you're in a position to earn really good money doing a job that you're absolutely adoring for the rest of your life, it's it's nothing to to invest in that, and that's what we're seeing over and over again. It's the it's the drive to take you to where you want to go, and and it's the catalyst to do that, and it's and it's giving you all the the kind of solutions that you need in there. Um, Sam says thanks for the advice, uh, Lucy. Hi, Lucy. Just had a Lucy's just completed her level three PT, and then she's unsure of the direction to take. Could this program show me where my strengths and skills are? Yeah, I mean. It's fair play for you to, to, to jump in and, and ask that question. And you know, it's not it's not a course for advanced S and C coaches, but it is if you like. It's not a course for novices, but it is. We've got people who've not got a lot of experience, and likewise, we've got people who are, are at the highest levels of professional sport, like science and sports science manager for Everton. 
And the reason it works for both people like that, and it's designed in this way, is that if you go back to the three pillars, those three pillars have different emphasis for different people. So if you're coming in as a really experienced S&C coach with all of that sort of coaching pillar nailed, not that it ever would be because we're all trying to improve, but if you if you kind of much further down the line on that coaching pillar and your nuts and bolts are, are all in order, well, you're going to benefit more from the personal development and the and the career and business development and really getting you to the next level in your business and your career. Likewise, if you're a novice coach, you might you'll come in and you'll you'll need probably a little bit more work on the coaching pillar, as well as thinking about what you want to do, why you want to do it, and how you're going to get there. And we give you that clarity. So, without question, you'll get thrown in, and it's a kind of environment where you'll be supported by the rest of the group massively. Um, it's a private environment. You can say whatever you want. You can, you know, no, don't be afraid to, to show kind of or, or to say that you're struggling with something because we'll, we'll jump in and help you. Uh, but also that, that will raise your game. And, yes, you will find out where you need to improve and where you're already strong and where you want to strengthen. But also it, the whole thing will raise your game. You know, and you and you'll at the end of that nine months, you'll be in a position that you probably wouldn't have been in three, four, five years from now had you had you kind of not jumped on the program. And that's that's a you know, it's a, we've seen it time and time and time again. All you got to do is jump over on that page that Darren's put out and and uh, and and watch some of the testimonials. You know, and and, and it's it's genuinely transformational. Um, I hope that answers your question, Lucy. Let Sorry. me know. No. Sorry, Daz. I actually remember um, Lucy, like when I I'd first done my personal trainer course, um, and it was a fairly like you know we were um, we we're in a, a closed group. It was a it's a fairly decent level, one well respected one with uh, Premier, and it was a good course. But the kind of depth of the, the level of depth that that you covered the different sort of content in and. How much you you know specific sort of coaching training you got with cues and and programming and stuff like that? I thought it I was at an okay level, and then when I kind of joined the mentorship, it was like wow, I've got a lot to learn. But the way it was delivered, it wasn't kind of oh, it's really more in depth than anything you would ever learn as a level three PT. But at the same time, it's done in a kind of very coach friendly way. And the fact that you've got a mentor to then chat about it and everyone in the group. So people are quite open and, you know, people could literally be, um, you know, in the group going, really good presentation on speed training, but I didn't quite get this bit. And we'll chat about it and nobody's frightened to ask questions. And that's a really powerful thing because, you know, I, I left as a qualified PT and then I felt a little bit alone, as if it was kind of like it all of a sudden it stopped, and I was by myself. Um, it's very different in the mentorship. You know, we've got people that are still jumping in the group now after four years, and still getting involved, coming to events. It's not like you're kind of left on your own. You once you're kind of like in in the tribe, I guess, if you like, you're kind of in it forever. Uh, and I think that's a really powerful thing. So, you know, just that's just my thoughts on the difference it made to me in the transition. Um, you, the way you can market yourself and position yourself. Uh, I know one of the questions was around, um, you know, is it really suitable for general population? Is it just for sports specific? Well, it, you know, you, it, it's really what you want it to be. Um, you know, so we've had a lot of people on this, probably, you know, about a 50-50 split, would you say, Brendan, between sort of people going into sport or people becoming real high-performance personal trainers? Yeah, yeah, absolutely about that. Uh, and and I, I think, you know, it's such a great positioning tool to have this fantastic experience and depth of knowledge um, to position yourself plus a qualification to position yourself above and beyond the other trainers that you're around, um, to be part of a network where you'll have opportunities, you'll find that often you'll end up working with some general population, but also you'll start picking up a few athletes to work with here and there. 
that makes it exciting for the general population as well. And you'll find that, you know, sport is a big part in people's lives nowadays as a sort of hobby and interest. And you can get some really good amateur level athletes um, working with you that aren't in a professional environment. Um, you know, so you can build up a really fantastic mix of clients where you can demand quite a high hourly rate but at the same time give them fantastic value and give them greater results they'd get from an average PT. Uh, I don't know, hopefully that helps. Yeah, I mean I think I don't I really don't differentiate and I don't kind of have a a coaching's coaching for me and I think it's great that's it. It's it's like a squat to squat and, and, and the context that you work with someone, whether they're trying to train to to get fit for, you know, a wedding or, or just to, to maintain their health or whether they're trying to win an Olympic gold, you know, it really isn't a distinction. And I know that some 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 S and C coaches are a little bit derog derogatory over the personal training industry. For me, I think it's you know there's there's some fantastic PTs, there's some fantastic S and Cs, there's some rubbish S and Cs and some rubbish PTs. So I, I don't have any issue with the personal training industry. I, I've I do and have done always worked with general population clients myself in uh, you know my spare time and enjoy the relationships that I've got with those people and strength and conditioning is a, a subject but it's really just about movement it's about learning how to to understand the body better and to, to think a little bit differently I think is one of the main things that we find on the course that people kind of it clicks in about watching people move in a slightly different way um, so you know that's what I think you'll find on it Becky and, and I do think it will really help you with your general population clients, I think ultimately it's it's whether you're ready to or you want to really push forward and you know build that business or to get to that next level of competence and 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 I'm sure we can help you with that and I'm sure you, you've already got a lot of experience that you can share but but I'm sure we can complement that and, and take you to a, a much you know a, a real different place and you'll be in a great group as well. Um, so you know that that's my take on it, and and I think the key thing that Darren mentioned about the community as well is really important. That as a, as Darren said, there's people in our mentorship community now that are, are you know they've been there for three, four, five years, and and some of them are even mentors now. You know, like we just spoke to Dean Fuash last week. Dean Dean won an award last year for uh, strength and conditioning coach of the year with the UKCA for his work with youth sport and Dean was one of the first people on our mentorship and he I worked with him to help him to help him set up his business and to help him work in, in sport and Dean's done great and he's coming back in as a mentor now and he's, he's going to add value massively but we've also got people in the group that are just in the group and they're doing great things in their own right and, and you know that they're, they're still there they're still adding value, they're still chipping in with discussions and yeah, that's one of the really cool things about it. They come to they come to our uh, events and really enjoy it. And um, you know, it, it really works for them. Um, Ben's just said thanks for that. He's gonna speak tomorrow, he's filled his form out. We've got quite a few uh, people that have suggested they're gonna fill forms out, but don't let that dissuade you from doing it guys, because I think it's it's not about the volume. It's about um, the right people for us. We want to get the right people in, and you know, everybody listening in, I, I really would encourage you to to head over to that link. I, I re put it in there for you. Strength and Conditioning Mentorship dot com forward slash list. That's for the mentorship application. The, the page where you can watch all the videos, testimonials, read about the course, and and click to speak to the team and fill in the questionnaire. And then Strength and Conditioning Mentorship dot com forward slash referral if you want to get in the mix on the referral side of things but the, the, the mentorship.com forward slash list is the one where you want to check out and, and learn more about the course. Um, anybody who's James you can don't, we'll, we'll send you that uh, video if you type in your email well done for winning the best of the best we'll get that sent to you uh, no problem at all. Daz are you any, any, uh, any other thoughts? Um, only thing I'd say is um, we we do uh, webinars every every month from you know different sort of sessions where we can teach you a bit about like today obviously programming. Uh, any of you that are left on the uh, 
on the line if you're not sort of uh, comatose or, or dead at this point. If you want to just type in anything you'd really like us to cover that we can bear in mind sort of next month if you, as far as a presentation on a particular thing that would help you, then just give us a shout. Mm. Always yeah. open for you know ideas and make sure we're giving you what you want. In terms of the level of the content, I think that this presentation that I did today pretty much sums it up. You know, I, I, I try to, to keep things real simple and even though this subject is a reasonably complex one or a challenging one, I think if you if you kind of get to grips with this and you enjoyed this and you feel like you learned something from this, then you'll you know, this is pretty much significant to every single module and we take lots of different components like the building the program side and the resistance training side and expand on that. We do a lot on the assessment side and we really expand on that. We're looking at the sport and expanding on that. Um, resistance training, power training, speed training, how to, to maintain, like develop mobility and, and get people moving well, give you the background to that. And we do it all in a really simple way that really kind of just makes it so easy for you to, 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 to get to grips with it and apply it, most importantly. We then take what you're doing on these theory modules uh, that you learn and you watch on the portal, and we, we back that up with practical resources. So let's say I do a, we do a session on resistance training, and then we'll, we'll, we'll direct you to the resource on how to uh, do train and, and lift properly with the Olympic lift and, and, our, and our basic strength and power movements. So you'll get directed to that and that will give you a real solid encyclopedic knowledge of how to do that. And then you go away and practice it and you use the coaching upload function to show us how you're getting on and give you feedback on that. Or your clients and your coaching and, and give you feedback on that. Uh, you then look at your programs and upload those and we'll give you feedback on that. So it's it's learn by doing as a coach as well as you know when you're in the mix and you and you're doing it as an athlete this is we practice what we preach you know we, we get better by doing it and getting our hands on people and, and we do that in conjunction with your personal mentoring and your personal action plan it's very specific mentorship and it's not just a course that you follow in you know week one two three four you know you're you're getting on doing your own stuff that is going to improve your business your understanding so you might take a we might do a couple of modules on, say, planning your programs, and then you, you speak to your mentor, and we, they say, well, what do you think I should be doing in the personal training environment with my general public clients? And then we say, right, how can we make that really applicable to you? How can we get your programs really upskilled and at that next level for your personal training clients and work together on it? And you, you have a lot of input on that as well. So it's a really kind of integrated interactive engaging program for you and then therefore you pass that on to your clients and your athletes. We then obviously give you the practical coaching and the practice on our live events and along with the three day live event we're also running loads of other ones you know we've got other specialist events that you're more than welcome to come along to and anybody on our mentorship program gets priority on that so if you want to learn we, we've got one this weekend, I know it's a bit late now, but we've got a, a, a course this weekend on how to coach better in looking at problem solving. Next, uh, in, sorry, in June we've got a, a course that Dave Hember and I are doing on strength, power and athleticism that is a two-day workshop that you can come to when you join the mentorship. And that's really all about how to, to, to master the basics, to teach the Olympic lifts, you know, real simple stuff that we need to do, but very very difficult sometimes to, to, to get good coaching on that. So you get access to that and you, you'll get priority on it. Uh, and we'll, we'll keep on doing it. We, we do loads and loads of workshops all, all year round that you will have access to and you can get to it and that's absolutely fine and, and, it, and it'll work really well for you. And then obviously underpinning everything you've got our Facebook community and a, and a bunch of like-minded people and, 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 uh, and that is just so powerful and you know, for me personally, that's that's been the real triumph as well for putting these people together and you know making things happen and people building businesses, people throwing ideas together. You know, different 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 ideas and, and concepts that 
are coming to fruition in different environments from S&C to high performance sport to personal training to boot camp. Yeah, it's, it's really cool and people in schools and people in rugby and cricket, you know, all the sports, it's it just, it's a very holistic environment, Daz, isn't it? It is, yeah. Um, I, I mean, I even I remember back in the early days of it, sort of before the group was as strong as it is now, um, you know, just sometimes it's who you know, isn't it? And it's the challenge of kind of getting an opportunity to shadow someone a bit or to to learn from a real great coach at a, at a higher level is sometimes quite difficult. Um, you know, but often it, now in the group, it's just a case of chatting to your mentor or one of the other mentors, and they can just kind of line up an intro for you immediately. It, you know, in, in reality, unfortunately, because that person doesn't know you from Adam and they're getting kind of like people asking to go and see them and spend five minutes with them, probably hundreds of emails every day, um, you don't, you wouldn't normally get the opportunity, you know. But all of a sudden, it's like, oh, you know, they're all right. You yeah, know, they're really cool, really, really great, working hard. Yeah, no problems. Yeah, tell them to come down and we'll grab a coffee. And you know, it just opens doors. It really does. Yeah, um, and uh, I think that's that's what it's about, mate. It's it's opportunities, and it's it's seizing those opportunities is is really what this is about, and. My, my, when I put this together, I, I really genuinely wanted to provide an absolutely awesome opportunity for for coaches to develop and and to 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 bring people together. And it really that is holistically what this is about. You know, it's about bringing people together in in a way that facilitates learning and development, and that also challenges, but you know there is nothing else out there like it and it's amazing that when you put something out there just kind of people's ears prick up and as I say we've had groups from America really strong kind of credible bunch of coaches and whatnot from America that are looking to take this on over there and you know tap into our education and our system likewise in Australia you know real strength strong S&C environment um, you know, again, they're looking to to tap into things in 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 Australia and run it, and you know, it's a global network now, and that's it's, it's really really cool and very very flattering, and and uh, and and it all stems from a strong desire from you listening in, and from from us as coaches to help and develop and and push forward, and that is in its truest sense what this whole program is about, and it's it's a great investment. Um, do we have any more questions, Daz? Do you know if you anything um, else? To... Yeah, well, I think Becky just asked how long has it been running for. I mean, how long has it been now? Mentorship. Um, well, I think I mean it started off as really quite informal, and I think like anything, it's sort of grown from there. So, like, I'll give you a bit of background of, of strength and conditioning education, in a sense. So. When I started up at Leeds Beckett, or Leeds Met as it was then, uh, as in coaching there full time, and we, we had a, a network of coaches in Yorkshire, and without sort of advertising, as it just literally just, you know, the odd email kind of, we're doing this little thing, come on up, I put on a speed clinic, and I did a, a session on speed training and plyometrics on a you know, a midweek night, six till nine o'clock at night, and literally without kind of any promotion, it, we had something like 35, 40 people just show up, and um, you know, it was great because I, I kind of had an idea what I wanted to show people, but everybody else kept chipping in, and, and it made me think, wow, people really want this, um, this this education, you know, and 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 also I want to keep developing myself. So I started to get other coaches in, and people like Duncan French, people like Nick Ward, people like the mentors on the program, and to help me. And I had a team of coaches there, you know, and I still do. We had at the time I had about ten assistant coaches and guys that were six PTs. We were doing like a lot of sessions. This was sort of for 20, 2010. It was the when when we were doing this stuff. And so I, I just thought, you know what, I'm going to do 
a workshop every other month. And then we did we started doing workshops every other month, live workshops. And again they kept getting fuller and fuller. And then it, and then people started emailing me from around the country saying, How come you're not doing any in London or, or Scotland? So guess what? We ended up doing them in London and, and Scotland. And then we, we, we started getting people saying, Well, how do you get how do you get into that position or how do you build you know get the clients that you're getting because at the time we we had I think we had something like a hundred sessions a week PT sort of gym S and C environment with with PT kind of general public population coming in and six coaches servicing them and myself including we also had you know England golf and GB judo and badminton and you know Olympic athletes training in this really cool community and it was people kind of were really interested so we but I was getting inundated with people asking for help and mentorship essentially so I kind of said well look I, I'll put together a program for you to to facilitate this and you know it involves this 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 and this and I think that's probably what will work it's similar to what we were doing with our interns but we formalized it and made it into you know more a better process and, a, and a, a structured process and it started drip feeding and we didn't really advertise and again we we didn't kind of you know we just got loads of people on it uh, through, through word of mouth and it's grown from there and then it you know with the advances on the internet and we did an online conference a couple of years ago it went really well and and then we decided to, to put the, the mentorship into an online format so that we could reach more people you know, and, and now we've obviously got the ability to do it globally, and that's really powerful as well. And um, so that's kind of where we are today, and that's the evolution of it. And um, we do we do a really good job with it, but you know, it's still something that I don't have a desire for it to. I don't want every man and his dog on this program. It's 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 really got to be the right people, and we want to make it so that we don't make the price too high. So that you know, great people just can't afford it, and also it's still a, a good investment, and it's and it's a you know a genuine investment for people. But we we have an an application process so that it really does mean that you you know I'll, I'll get on the phone, I'll chat to you, and make sure it is right for you. And so will our other guys like Darren and, and the rest of the team. We'll, we'll have a chat and make sure that it is the right program for you. And it's just literally grown from from there, Becky. And, you know, this is a, a. I'm sure we'll make some tweaks to it, but as it is now, it, it's a very, very strong, really, really solid process, and something that you know, myself, but the rest of the team are really, really proud of because there isn't anything else as comprehensive, but also as inclusive and engaging as this anywhere else in in the country, and possibly not the world. I know that's a bold claim, but you know, we've had people tuning in from. America, maybe they can. I don't know if they're still on the line, but maybe they can let us know if there's anything out there in the states. It was Lucy, wasn't it? Or Laura, sorry. Um, it was was from the states, but we've had people from Australia saying, you know, we want to get on the program, and that's why we're we're connecting with some of the 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 really good gyms and and sports teams in Australia to to open the doors over there for people, and 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 lead the mentorship from Australia, and yeah, that's kind of where we're at with it. I know I've rambled on a bit there, Becky, but I um, hope that answers your question. Thomas has said, really great webinar. Thank you very much. And um, guys, if, if uh, I know we've had a lot of forms posted uh, on the, in, I've got uh, notifications on my email here that on my phone, but there is, it is all about the right people on this program. And I think I really would say that if you if you've kind of watched the webinar and, and you, you know this content is right for you sometimes the, t the the time is never right you know there's always something to 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 stop people from taking action no matter what it is and no matter who you are and the four words that I always sort of echo or say and it's not my four words I, I learnt it from uh, Seth Godin and, and, and some of the, the top kind of thought leaders is there's four words that they talk about and, and those four words are if in doubt begin 
and and the idea behind that is if there's that resistance, there's never that resistance is always going to be there. You know, it's always going to haunt you if you're not careful, if you let it. But actually, if you can almost that resistance is there to help you. And if you feel it, it's like right, I need to push forward here. You know, and at least kind of reach out and make sure that there's a chance for me to develop. And I think that's the thing I would say is that we've we've seen people that we've chatted to people that have come on this course having been I don't reluctant is not the right word, but naturally, you know, they've asked questions and, and eventually they they've come on the course and we've sort of said, Look, it is right for you. We've 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 made this we've had this interview process and I can see that it'll really help you and I can see that you really want to move forward. Um, and they've uh, they've joined us and literally within weeks, genuinely, and certainly months, it's it's transformational. It genuinely is, and, and they're in a completely different position. And you know, Rob Smolden tuned in last night from Portugal. Sorry, Monday night from Portugal, and he was like, you know, somebody that I would sort of say was a little bit like that and, and last month he won our student mentorship student of the month for the work he's done in Cornwall with Cornwall High Performance and they've built relationships with the surfers down there, they've got a relationship with Truro University as well as their personal training business and just unbelievable action taken, just massive, massive action taken and somebody who came in not not skeptical at all, but just like kind of, you know, I've done, you know, he'd done a lot of courses and and whatnot, and now it's just like, wow, this is different, and and we've seen that time and time and time again, and I, I would say that if you remember four words, it would be that those four, if in doubt, begin, because that resistance is always going to be there, no matter what you do, and and no matter who you are, and and if you if you if you've listened to us for this long and, and you're kind of still interested in the process, you really do want to fill that form out and check it check it out, um, because you know it's 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 genuinely awesome. So I don't know what you think about that, Daz. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I think one of I know back when I originally sort of um, applied, I was worried about the money. You know, committing the money, I could sort of afford it, but it was it was borderline, and I just don't like spending money, like anyone, especially anyone anyone from England. Um, and secondly, I was worried about the commitment, and you know, having a full time desk job plus coaching, if I could do it. Um, but I did it. Um, I was always in the back of my mind. I was kind of like kind of wavering as to whether I should perhaps just think about doing it next month and that's probably the most common thing that I ever hear from anybody. Oh, I, I think maybe this month's not right for me but next month but if I had have put it off to the next month, one you might not have been running it because obviously we just have to really base it on you know like each each moment as it comes, we can't guarantee that there's going to be another one again or when it's going to be in reality because we're just really focused on the next one and making sure that that's the best it can be. Um, for me, that's kind of like you can always put stuff off that I would have in reality have just been sat at a desk job doing something that really didn't make me happy and I'm not. You know, I'm working with athletes, I'm working with clients, I'm presenting to other coaches uh, nationally, and, and it's it's exciting for me to be doing what I love, um, and that was all really just down to taking action and taking the plunge and going for it. Mm, yeah, and and the thing is, you know, we put that much effort and energy into into you guys on the program that you know it takes us months to even consider running another intake and you know I, I think without question this will be the last intake of excuse me this will be the last intake of the year um, for, for, for us because it, it, it's exhausting for, for for myself and the rest of the mentors uh, we, we're all coaching as well we're all still in the mix in the trenches working with athletes ourselves and you know you, you, and, and running businesses and and so as fantastic as it is and I want to make sure that we put absolutely everything into this 
next intake in May and to make sure that you really are just at the at the center of our attention and and, we, and, we, and you get everything from it and um, you know this presentation that I've delivered tonight is is, is very very typical of kind of the, the energy and the passion that you're going to get from not just me but absolutely everyone on this program the mentors but not only them but the people involved as well uh, really really top top people and great group great group of, uh, of of individuals on this on this course it's 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 just super super cool um, let's have a look through these questions just make sure we've got everything here. I want to make sure that I've answered everyone's questions before we go tonight. And I really appreciate you guys tuning in. I think the um, the main questions have been answered, Darren. I don't know if you've seen them that I haven't. Did you? In, nobody answered in the end the um, one of the questions, did they? When you were asking about the three E's. Yeah. No, that nobody nailed it. So I'm going to have so a look. What what was the prize for that one? That was what was it? That was the mixed martial arts lessons from the trenches strength and conditioning video. So why don't you give somebody a chance that's still on the line to grab that one? Yeah, yeah, go on then. You you take the lead, mate. I'll, you're the you're the uh, the whiz kid. <laughs> All right. So um, so first person to put in that they want. The DVD gets it. Simple. Okay. Right. So we found whoever was the quickest on the keys there. Uh, who did that end up being? That was. Does it look like Toby? Oh, that's um, a couple. I'm just writing a, a, a response. Cool. Okay, I'm just trying to figure it out, but I've got you on the list anyway. So uh, let's have a look. The um, Becky's asked. Uh, Becky just made a comment there. She's she's just invested in NPE and PN. There's all the initials in the world. NPE, <laughs> PN, S and C. It's um, there's some good courses there, and I've done the NPE. Uh, sorry, the PN one. Uh, I know the guys from NPE really well. Ben Davis is a colleague, friend, and I've, I've spoken, uh, done a, a webinar and stuff like that for them. Uh, I've also, they also, me and Darren, they also invite us down to their events and, and we're, a, we're a partner of MPE, so, you know, they're, they're, they're cool and nice guys and they, they talk about the business a lot, it's their business um, consultancy type thing for, for fitness. Um, but uh, I think the thing for me is that it works hand in hand, you know, you've got to be a great coach first you cannot market out you can't out market or outsell a bad product or service you've got to be a fantastic coach and from a referrals perspective your ability to get results is what strengthens and builds your business now of course you need to be able to market and and uh, and get in the mix of course you do but you also have to be a fantastic coach and coaching also helps your business skills because it's communication helps your marketing so I think that I get where, you, where you're at with it Becky and that's totally cool what I would say is that the courses will hugely complement each other and having no and knowing Ben and, and the guys at NPE on the business stuff that that I'm sure they'll um, you know they really will work well together and happy to to kind of have a chat with you on the phone specifically about that if you get if you get the form filled out we can make that happen. Uh, Gareth's asked do you need to be affiliated to the mentor program to attend the three-day seminar? Yes you do. We're, 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 that's a total immersion program for mentorship students and we really wanted to make that kind of with the, the energy and the drive in that three days is absolutely unbelievable. It's such a good, good weekend. It, it, honest to God, I mean, people are leaving there with so much skills and tools and and enthusiasm to take it forward as well. 
um, it's 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 a mentorship weekend just because it's got to be. You know, we've got to we've got to make that happen for mentorship students only because it, it's it's so integrate integral. And I think because the community is so tight and people know each other from the group and whatnot, you know, it's, it's sort of important to, to keep that congruence and and the behaviour there and and whatnot. But it's it's something that as a coach, you know, I want to put my time into people in our mentorship program and, and help them as best I can. And the last three day weekend, I don't think I could speak for a day afterwards. I was the last Sunday afternoon. I was kind of sounded like I was about 70 and I'd smoked, smoked 20 a day all my life. So I was talking and out and we were out on the night and you know, it's really quite a kind of strong, strong thing there. Um, so, yeah. Um, the prize went to uh, Toby Gilbert, by the way. So if you let us know your email address, you probably got it anyway, but um, pop that in the box and we'll make sure we get that across to you tomorrow. Wait, yeah, that's good. I know, I know. Um, Gareth was close. He said he had two, almost three. Um, so, but don't worry, Gareth. We'll be doing more giveaways in. I'm sure we'll do another webinar in another few weeks' time. And I don't know what I'm going to present on in a few weeks' time. But if you, if you guys have got any ideas for me, let me know. And uh, you'll be obviously more than welcome to tune in on that one as well. Um. Yeah, I think, you know, it's been a really good session tonight, Daz. I've, I've enjoyed it, and I hope you guys have got something out of it. In terms of, like, the, your take-homes from this one, folks, what are, your, what are your one or two, you might have more, but one or two big kind of nuggets of information that you think will you'll be able to take forward to apply from this talk? You might have to rack your brains back to what we covered but all the information on the secret success in coaching and the 3E formula, the six steps from defining your purpose and your goal to the assessment process to closing the gap to looking at your exercise selection and your specificity, following the principles of training in your programs uh, right through to making the program balanced for that buy-in factor and then obviously our mentorship program and, and how that is going to take you forward and, and take you to the next level. What are your three kind of or two, one or two or three biggest things in there that you think would really take things forward? Brendan, whilst they're um, having a think of that as well, Ben uh, Lambert was just asking about your thoughts on um, which is better to have like a, a, um, a credited strength and conditioning coach um, award from UKSEA or the level three uh, S&C qual uh, that you get through the course. Um, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, certainly from my side of things, and, and you might have a different answer, but um, probably not. Um, the, the first for sport qualification is a credible qualification in its own right and obviously you can gain insurance and so on from that side. At the same time, if you want to get your UK SEA accreditation, then you know, you're know you going to be more than ready to be able to do really well through your assessment process uh, off the back of the mentorship. Uh, Jared Deacon is one of the mentors coming in. He's a director of the UK SEA. Um, we've got Brendan, uh, Nick Ward, and I think some other coaches that actually tutor for the UK SEA. Um, and I think all of the mentors are accredited uh, and have mentored people that have been through the process. So I think the big benefit for me is, I mean, I went on UK SEA workshops years back, and they were really good. So I'm not criticising them in any way. What I would say is, it's a very. It, there are two very clear, distinct differences. One is that you know you've still got to then get to the level where you can take the stuff from the workshop and implement it, so you can pass your assessment, which can be challenging. And secondly, once you've got your UK SEA accreditation, it's not like that isn't just the be all and end all. You're going to be going up for roles against a million other coaches with accreditation. And it's really kind of like then comes down to 
contacts, who you know, what experience you've got. And that's, I think, where the mentorship comes into its own because, you know, for somebody to be advertising a role and then they can give Stuart Yule a quick buzz and say, is this guy legit? And he says, yeah, he's great, give him a chance. That's pretty powerful. Um, I thought, what do you think, Brendan? Any echo that or anything different? Yeah, I mean, we've got the kind of best qualification for strength and conditioning on this on this mentorship in my opinion and and the reason I say that is because it it definitely allows you to express your own philosophy in getting it and and to to express kind of what you've learned on the course in getting it as well but it also allows you to use it properly so if you ever want to approach different organizations and schools like first sport qualifications are, are ridiculously well regarded and and the SNC level three be, because of what we've done as well and and the partnership with the RFU you know it's just it's just smacks of credibility um, but not only that though as Darren kind of alluded to you know I'm I'm not anti UKCA at all I think they, they do a, a good job in kind of offering you know entry level qual and uh, they without question over a hundred of our students in the past from all the mentors and whatnot have, have take, gone on to take it and you know you'll be there you can you can take it at the end and if you want to and it's it's you should probably we've got a, a really good rate of getting people through first time as well um, but but it, it's, I think if you started off scratch from scratch you might struggle to get the UKCA and uh, through our course you'll 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 be fine you'll be ready to go at the end of it so you know it, it doesn't really um, you don't necessarily need it but um, but it but it if you want it, it it's there for you and I think that that's what I would say about it and the main the most important thing to to your success depending on the route you, you're looking to take but I would say in general is is genuinely your ability to do the job really well and you get to do the job by being a good coach you get to do the job by getting experience you get experience by having a great network and you have a great network by mixing with the right people and, and putting yourself out there and, and driving forwards and that's what our mentorships about so you know there's so many people out there that s and coaches that are not even considered getting the UKCA qual but they're working at a high level and and that's there for you if you want to get it fantastic no problem as well we can we can put that in your action plan and we can make that happen for you and um, so hopefully that will answer your question I don't know if you've got any other thoughts on that Ben but um, hopefully yeah that, that'll answer your question on that one um, Becky's Made a nice comment here. Thank you very much. Takeaway for for Becky is back to basics and keeping it simple, but not easy. <laughs> In brackets, yeah. Good good thoughts, Becky. That's um, it's a good shout. That it's 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 something that it's very easy to complicate things. It's very easy to complicate things, and it's actually more complicated or very or more challenging to simplify them. I know that sounds like a bit of a paradox, but it is actually easier to complicate things and sometimes just having a, a systematic approach, being on a course where it breaks things down like we are doing and, and, and allows you to, to simplify things is, is something that means you can see things clearly and it's organized rather than chaos. And so keeping it simple but not easy, yeah, I get that, I get that. Um, so, I mean... Psychology is something that we don't kind of cover in, in great depth on the mentorship as a kind of separate module, but the personal development pillar really does tap into your psychology. We push you to get to know yourself and your own strengths and weaknesses and what you, you, your own goals are and if you like, get beneath the surface of where you are. and underneath the surface you know we've all got limiting beliefs and we've all got kind of layers that that are that have kind of 
happened over experiences that we've gone through as individuals in our formative years and, and beyond. And I think one thing I would say is that if you've if you if you kind of dig down a little bit and you might be like a little bit like me as a, a Yorkshireman that um, you know maybe a, a skeptical individual or something like that and you've got to kind of sometimes unwrap those layers and think well you know sometimes you just got to the door is open you still got to step through the door and you still got to take that chance to to really kind of you know nobody's going to do it for you and um, so even though we've 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 laid pretty down down a pretty solid foundation here and uh, in the in the metaphor of the the building right at the beginning of this talk we we've we've laid that down for you you've still got to you still got to walk through the door and, and take action on it and and i think sometimes resistance you got to examine why that resistance exists and and uh, and, and why that that's happening because if you if you know that something you need to take action on something you know you need to move forward, then the only thing stopping you is you and your limiting belief or your layered up approach of of, of not allowing that and and it's something that I personally kind of have had to develop because because my desire to to move forward to get to where I want to be was that strong that I realized like I'm actually stopping myself here I'm I'm in my own way you know and and I think that's something that I really would encourage you to to have a think about with with your your own personal development and 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 if the course of action that you take off the back of this webinar and and in general moving forward it's it's really important to 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 be honest with what you want where you are now and then how you can close the gap and, and and take things forward and whatever course of action you take. And I know you've done quite a lot of thinking and stuff on that as well, Darren, haven't you, in your previous roles and in general? Yeah, 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 definitely. I think it's, uh, yeah, I mean, I, was, uh, I think it's human nature to procrastinate and uh, I was, you know, one of the, the biggest culprits of, of all, really, but... Um, yeah, I had to do a lot of reflecting. Obviously, for me, it involved a major sort of career change. Um, as well, I wasn't, you know, in my twenties. I was in my thirties, and it was kind of, a, is it, am I too old? Am I too late to the game? And you know, it it was. I guess it the scary thing was was I, you know, you, you I potentially I could have been quite close to not doing it. Uh, and I dread to think where I'd be if I hadn't. And luckily for me, I've always been one of those people that just thinks, oh, it feels right, I'm just going to go with it anyway, to hell with it, and, I, and I'll make it work. Um, you know, if I need to work a few extra hours or get something done so I can do it. And, and in reality, I think I actually probably, within halfway through the course, I'd already made the money back from that I'd paid for the course anyway if that makes sense, because I've actually progressed at such a quick rate, I was getting opportunities for work uh, and getting paid more money than I would have been previously, that kind of like I ended up halfway through the course with all this extra knowledge, connections, and actually I wasn't even out of pocket. <laughs> um, and then everything else was a bonus really, so that really helped me to get out of a kind of real frustrating job that was a bit dead end for me and uh, to you know get in get into doing something that I really love and enjoy so yeah I mean uh, nothing but positive for me obviously yeah um, no for sure and interesting comment from Graham and I hope you don't mind me sharing it Graham it's um, essentially Graham just said he's, he's held the UKCA accreditation for four years, but it's in those four years that he's learned and hopefully improved as a coach following that accreditation to working where he is now. Maybe that would have been achieved a lot quicker under the mentorship program. I think that's an interesting insight. And I think, you know, I said to Graham, I said, I think what we offer is we we offer a lot more of a process of development than than any other course out there. That's not. I'm not 
talk about the UKCA here, it's not they're not competition for us. You know, it's a very different process, and we offer a lot more there. It's deliberate. We we, we look after you. You know, we we help you, and we care for you. We care a lot more as well, and we want that success. And we will do everything we can to help you, and you know, whatever that may be. And uh, and so I think that's what I would say. That's where we get our results from. You know, it's just. I mean, I I think this is. I'm a. I consider myself an out and out coach through and through. And when I'm coaching athletes, and when I'm coaching athletes now, my goal is to guide them and help them and get them to where they want to be as quickly as they as they as they can. You know, and when, and explore and learn and develop. And I look at it exactly the same with this mentorship process is that my goal is to help you and give you everything I've got to, 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 to put you in a position where you can achieve your success. And and the same with the other mentors, same with Darren, same with the rest of the crew, that everything's geared up to your success. And, that, and that's what you, you don't get that anywhere else uh, because nobody's geared up for their success, they're geared up for their profit uh, most of the time. And you know we, we've set this course up in a way that we can really facilitate development, and and we care a lot more. I think that's what I would say. Um, great comments from Ben as well. Let's catch up on the phone, Ben. Um, you made it, uh, some some good thoughts there, and I'm glad you like the iceberg as well. That's your take home. I get I, I gather the iceberg and, and something to, to implement. Um, so, yeah, great thoughts. I will look forward to connecting with you. If you want to fill out the form, let's have a chat. Let's get you back on track and moving forward. Um, anyone else got any questions? I wanted to make sure we get through everyone's questions and make sure we've connected with everyone uh, as much as possible, Daz, so we can kind of Stay on the line a few more minutes, if that's all right with you. Yeah. And um, see if see if anything else comes out. We've got a busy day tomorrow as well at Strength and Conditioning Education. We've got obviously got quite a few application calls set up for mentorship people, but we've also got Duncan French coming up this weekend and. Duncan's a, a, a good friend of mine, but my word, you know, he's a talented coach and really, really great thinker on the subject of coaching, motor learning. And on Saturday, he's coming up to Leeds to share with us his latest sort of research and findings on that. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that because what we'll be able to do is take that straight away. He's, he's kind of like a faculty member of the mentorship and he does do some mentoring and he's and he's a he's a part of our master coach mentorship as well but um, he, he, he says so we can take I'll be taking what he's showing on Saturday and really breaking that down into um, sort of tangible bite-sized bits but also playing with it in my own coaching as well, and, and, I, and I love speaking with Duncan, and it's it's that kind of embracing all the learning and, and the current trends that you know, I think we do have that at the forefront of our process, Daz, don't we? It's, it's it's sort of it's always been the same, you know. My my values or my my motto for strength and conditioning education is accelerating your development through world class education and learning, and then accelerating your development, inspiring your success. Is the other term that we use on the website, and that's pretty much the company in a nutshell, isn't it? That's what we're all about. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, we're getting a few people signing off. Uh, I got a message here from Lee, Lee. Just finishing off his MSc. Definitely want to learn from you, and going forward, think we'll be good. From the applied perspective, and really developing coaching skills. Sorry, missed the main part of the webinar. Which part did you see, or which when did you join us, Lee? Which part were you in the mix from? And then we'll uh, we can. And, and if you've got any specific questions on anything 
on the mentorship or anything in general, just just type them in, mate. We'll get the replay up for you, Lee, as well at some point, so you can catch the full uh, the, the full earlier presentation that Brendan did. 